I ended up leaving the Temple of Emos after Adeline had all of her gold and all your guys' gold was ejected by Emos, who turned out to be a demon, being manipulated by the paladins of Omos, the Warriors of Light, during the last war. Adeline is dissatisfied with the result, of course, and feels like the contract has somehow been broken. And she wants to head into the temple and go pray to her gods to see if she can seek redemption or salvation or figure out a way to null the contract now. She speaks. She seeks spiritual absolution. You guys have traveled through the portal, which Arno was able to hold open for some time as you guys were struggling to basically, again, almost spend another week at the temple trying just to move the gold of all the logistics. But of course, you know, Arno just has a cup worth 23,000 gold <laughs> that he just carries around. <laughs> he opens up the portal, though, and you guys all walk through and you guys are heading on your way to Stormbrook and you're right outside the gates of Stormbrook, one of the largest cities within the continent of Warren. It's right now around 1.40 in the afternoon. And it's like in the winter time here. The, te the season is probably like Southern Italy, you know, thereabouts, you know, 60 degrees, something like that, right? Northern Florida this time of year. Or not really. I mean, in the winter time, <laughs> not this time of year, but sweating your balls off. <laughs> so, what do you guys do? Or did I miss anything? Or did you guys want to add anything to the recap? <laughs> I believe Evie was about yeah. to go on her way to the castle with the. Yes. She got to get dressed first, right? You guys met a new yeah. adventure named Evie because our previous adventure, Istra was captured or killed by Ian Parnish. And lo and behold, there is supposed to be a wedding. <laughs> As Evie found out that Ian Parnish is going now to get married to Istra. And the Viggle line will merge with the Parnish line. And Ian's questionable, he'll basically become royalty at this point and consolidate all the power or any dissenters to the throne of Stormbrook. His ambitions beyond that are unknown. You guys, of course, fought with Ian before and kind of got smacked around because you guys tried to summon him through the portal. You guys didn't know what you were in for, so. <laughs> no, it, it is what it is. And, uh, so yeah, Evie has traveled back outside. Of course, the bag of holding is now apparently in the king's possession as well. As you guys kind of wasted the time trying to do it and sent Kordar off to try to get the bag of holding and he kind of fumbled the job. <laughs> Couldn't really oh, convince okay. the merge. Couldn't really convince the merchants. So a lot of uh, a lot of stuff happening, I guess. Just more or less a big pile of gold and sitting somewhere in a temple that's been sitting there for decades, and now we know why. It's very hard to move. <laughs> <laughs> or shall we spend another three sessions figuring out how to move it? <laughs> you guys are outside the uh, the gates to Stormbrook. I'm assuming you guys can do whatever you want, talk or do whatever i arno is sick or whatever but so i also know that we wanted to get oh he's, th uh, he's throwing up in the restroom right now <laughs> yeah oh jesus i know that we wanted to um go and get a cart either way correct yeah i think that's a good idea so we want azul to do that because they don't like me oh uh well, yeah, you can do it. Uh, I was going to go to the store. I was going to go to the market myself, regardless. And uh, Evie's going to be getting ready for the um, wedding thing. Uh, our date, yes, to the wedding. Uh, you guys are all together outside of the city gates, I'm assuming. Mm. Evie has said, yeah, you basically brought you guys up to speed. What is my cover going to be, guys? He doesn't need to know anything about you. If he asks, just say none of his business. Uh, men love a mystery and all that. <laughs> I mean, showing up with such a pricey item without having some means of why I have it. 
could draw suspicion or attention. Especially your uh, your look seems a bit more noble than most of us all. It's hard it's hard to think of a place. I I'm not I don't go much around. I don't know any nobles around any area. Uh, I have never been part of high society either. I wouldn't know correct way of faking your identity. Um, yeah. You have courtesans here in your land. I Ooh. don't know. Well, where I come from, there are famous women who entertain the nobles and royals and get all kinds of gifts and jewels and trinkets. Oh, now I know what you said. Okay. Yes, possibly, yes. For sure, 100%. Definitely. That will if, do. If that's what you need, then go with that. Uh, should we head into town? Uh, Corridor, do you want to come with us? You don't have to enter the store with us when we go to buy supplies. Yeah, I should be. I can follow you guys around, but when it comes to dealing, I'll just sit in the background. Okay. <laughs> Are we not going to prepare any documents for Evie? How could we? Oh, wait. I think I have just the thing. And uh, he pulls out a uh, pen, a quill. It's very fancy, and uh, at the tip, uh, it's gold, uh, and has ruins all over it that shine uh, white. This is a magic pen. Cool. Or pen. Uh, Azul makes an insight roll. Oh, an insight roll? Yeah. All Sorry, right. I didn't mean to interrupt you, though. Oh, it's all right. Rolling across the screen. <laughs> uh, Sorry, go ahead and finish before I interrupt you. Or interrupt right. you. Uh, perhaps we just get a blank sheet of paper and draw up whatever we think is necessary. You shall be my bodyguard. Uh, yes, when we go to the party, I'll act as a slave uh, for your personal bodyguard. Excellent. He doesn't have the mark of a slave, though. Remember, the slaves all have a mark above their eye. Do we have a disguise kit? So we have that. We do. And I also have this guy's self, but that it only lasts for an hour. But I could cast it again, but I don't know. I can't do it like in the middle of the wedding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you're going to go as a slave, you're going to need to look the part. What's the park usually look like? The shuffling? This guy self up. only works for self, by the way. Okay. Uh, excellent. Uh, here, he hands you the pin. Uh, place the mark where it needs to go. I'm not well known for my, how do I say, artistic talents. Uh, just imagine the image you want, and uh, the pen should do the rest. Very well. I'll go ahead and uh, mark his face with how I've seen numerous slaving brandings. I make a performance check, correct? Me? Uh, yeah. I'll roll it. What's your modifier? Plus three. I roll it in secret, so you don't know how good it is. Well. <laughs> it's, no. it's a no magic pen. Gaming. <laughs> it does illusionary scripts, so it should come out exactly how he wants it. Okay. Sure. Yes. <laughs> All right. But still, it comes out. Oh, it comes out pretty much exactly how he wants it. Yes. What's the name of the pen? Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, oh that's inventory. Inventory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, accident looks pretty good. But then again, you know, he spent a lot of time hunting slaves, not really trying to like forge slaves. Ah, oh, emerald pen. <laughs> I didn't have the, the 
the money. Uh, I didn't buy it, so I just wrote down the name and what it does. Cool. In the D and D Beyond thing. Cool. Well, now that you got the mark, we should probably change your pants slightly, as I don't believe he got a good look at you in the battle. But it wouldn't be best if he knew you were there. Definitely don't want that. Evie, you seem to be one who would be most acquainted with changing appearance. Can you take yes. care of it? Yes, let me try. What are you trying to do, Evie? I want to try to dress him up with, um, I have some costumes and stuff like that. Um, so Azul's being dressed up basically out in the woods before we go to the gates, correct? Mm -hmm. What type of clothes are we making? Is What are we making Azul look like? The wedding well, starts in roughly three hours. Not like a really poor slave because he's my personal bodyguard slave. So he's going to still have some armor, but he's still going to be, you know, not in fine clothes. Okay. Off my that makes sense. I, I will roll your disguise off. kit. What's your proficiency modifier? I roll it in That's secret. Three. So I rolled it in secret and I add three to the roll. If it goes against the person's perception, let me draw it. If they want to want to take a closer look. Accident, it looks pretty good. Rags. You know, but not holes in places, but definitely like he's dressed to a station. You've done well. I'm sure this will work. Now, what is the story you're going to be going with? Uh, he is a uh, punish. Uh, what's the word? Kind of. Um, kind of I am going to be going as I've already given my name to the gentlemen in the shop. I will have to use my real name and explain that I am a courtesan, famous through all the lands, and I will need some names of some neighboring towns. Uh, well, we could certainly look at the map and come up with some. You could simply be a courtesan from the southern continent. They don't seem to be too familiar with them. That is a better idea. That Works way perfectly. Should... You can go ahead and say you're a courtesan for the Ravazaya family of Hasbog. <clears throat> Ravazaya family of Hasbog. I've already given them that name and they went unfamiliar. Write that down. <laughs> Some of these last What is it? The Raison. Ravosire. Ravosire. Of Hasbog. Okay. Accident's voice like kind of reverberates through the forest meadow. You see some Boy. birds fly off in the distance, disturbed by his deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> Southern continents, it is. You guys ready to head to the gates? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Okay, you guys make your way there. I'll add more. I'll add ten more minutes to the timer. It took about ten minutes to dress him up. Another ten minutes to kind of add some clothes and stuff. It's right now, two twelve. Hours. So Wait before the last war, like the orcs used to rule over Stormbrook until it was liberated. Um, the rumor is the adventurers who liberated before headed north to Barovia to on orders of the king, and they have yet to return, or at least nobody really knows the full story of what happened to them. But the trade has opened up. Carts and people are traveling in and through the city once again, and the merchants and commerce have taken hold. 
near the outskirts of the walled city, um, which is being repaired through masonry, the last few weeks at least. There is a small line forming, where guards basically question each person coming through. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Exit and approaches the guards. So it's like a guardhouse. There's like probably like five or six guards. They all wear the king's I'll colors. Walk up with him too. Okay. They all wear the king's colors. Red and yellow. Exodin, what does the king's sigil look like? <clears throat> uh, let's go with. Is it the is it a new sigil or the original? It's whatever you want it to be. I well, was I'm thinking so, uh, like a squid guy. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, he made his own new sigil after he took kingship. Then uh, he's probably going to make it uh, like, I'm going to guess, red, like a red squid like creature with uh, black holes for the eyes. Um, kind of an Kind of like an <laughs> imposing, yeah, kind of an imposing presence. <laughs> really, he doesn't really hold back on his uh, nefarious intentions. He doesn't, doesn't really care. I think he's going to have too much hubris for that. At least at this point. Uh, Not that he's almost sealed the deal with Istra. Or at least what we think is Istra. <laughs> uh, halt there, stranger. I'm just passing through. What does Exodus look like? What? What does he look I mean, like? What is he dressed like? Uh, I'm still wearing my armor and uh, carrying a bunch of large sacks and Heavy backpack. Kind of look uh, like a knight almost, right? Uh, I wouldn't say I look like a knight. Because uh, my armor is pretty tatered and worn. Um, and I don't, I mean, I'm not wearing a helmet. And uh, I got my gray sword and mace hanging from uh, my backpack on my back. Blue scale dragon born about seven feet tall. Uh, six foot seven, yeah. Do you have any like sigils on you that like indicate who you work no. for or anything like that? No. You're like a Ronin almost at this point. Right? <laughs> yeah. You have no master. I, I'm full independent. Oh. Oh, we might have an adventure here. There's not too many Dragonborn. He says, look at his sword and his weapons. The guards and stuff like talk to him. And they like, they say, oh. Well, it'll be too silver to come through. Very well. I'll just give him the two silver. Mark it on the sheet. Who goes in next? I'll follow suit. Cordar looks kind of like. What does Cordar look like? Is he dirty? Uh, yeah, a bit ragged. But is it? It's not like he's like. Does he have dreadlocks? Like he was. Uh, he just has curly hair. Uh, sorry, Evie, Evie said she was going with me, right? Or that I, okay, he can go first. Okay. Cardar, do you have the dreadlocks? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay, but you kind of look like a you're a kind of a giant fur bog too, right? Oh yeah, you're like six five or something. Yes. The 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 boots. Look at all the giants coming through the city. I appreciate the compliment. Do you have a staff? I do not. What should we charge him? Oh, he looks like a, a beggar. I'll just hand him a gold piece. You hand him a gold piece? Yes. Oh, I was just going to ask you for a copper. Did you beg a noble? <laughs> How did, you must be a panhandler. <laughs> what do you a, say? He's like... This is a whole year's wage for me. <laughs> you hand him a gold <laughs> coin, and the gold coins Walk are about in. the size of a nickel almost, you know. Um, yeah. Who goes in next? I'll go in, and Azul should come, probably come with me because he looks like a slave, and they might not let him in by himself. <laughs> okay, sure. My lady, what brings you here? I have a date to attend to the wedding of the king. The king, yes. Do you have your invitation? I'm going with the shop owner. Master. Who's that? 
Don't. Pull up the same. <laughs> Didn't you see her pass Rashad by before? Elah Rashad Elahim. <laughs> oh, Lord Rashad. Oh, he's a lucky man, isn't he? Yeah, real lucky. <laughs> <laughs> My lady, did, did you pay the fee already? I thought I saw you travel through here. I did. Oh. But I'm also escorting my slave. Shall we fetch you a, co a coach? I will not be needing one at this time. Yes, my lady. I didn't charge you yet, but it's a gold coin for you to come into the city. So you just had to reduce it from before when you entered. You guys are in the city. The city is mid-afternoon, you know? It's 2.20 in the afternoon. It's bustling. Where are we going and what are we doing? Oops. Yeah, I need to get you a dress for the party. Yes, I have to go to the... I kind of lean all of them in for a bit so nobody hears us. I'll say, I, I still have the money from the task I was meant to do earlier. So I still have... 7,000 on me. Say it so loud. I just say it. Do you okay. He said we were huddled in whispering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I'm just, allow, I'm just allowed. The voice. Oh, yeah. I know what it's like to not be able to whisper with the voice. <laughs> uh, we, uh, after we get her, maybe we spend a little bit on the dress with that much gold. We need to make it look good. No more than 100. Uh, 100 should probably do it. Feel free to keep carrying it as long as you don't run away with it. Alright. The only thing I plan on doing is spending it. That oh. is still <laughs> owed to me. No. Now, Corda, what will you be doing while I go to the market? Well, if anything, I would go to the market, but... At a few other smaller shops, though. Especially knowing that he won't be around. I'll make him no longer a problem for you, if you wish. No need of that for right now. Especially that it's meant for a task at hand. Suit yourself. I will. <laughs> Very well, then I will be going to... Uh, what is his name? The Boulder place? Uh, no, the merchant that we uh, talk with the most. Yes. What's his name? Rashad. Rashad. Oh, it is Rashad. Okay, okay. You, you need any cash before you go? No. Alrighty. But I'll be there soon enough as soon as they leave so I can pick up some stuff. Also, if you happen to find, you know, any beautiful instruments, that I might like, so I, I, I'll definitely pay you for them in your travels. Very well. I'm gonna go ahead and head over to Rashad before he's too busy for getting ready for the wedding, hopefully. Okay. Exit and walks off to the, the boulder. Where does Azul go? Azul is following uh, Evie around. Yep. Yep. I okay. guess we'll go to the Be dress good shop. Slay, boy. With how I look, <laughs> I have to, <laughs> unless I want problems. Uh, Cordar, where are you going? Are you sticking with Edie uh, or? I'm gonna be near the market, but I'm waiting for them to leave so I can actually talk to other people that don't hate me. <laughs> okay, where specifically do you want to go? Do you want to talk um, to somebody in specifically? I or? want to people who have herbs around the place, especially with the new system you gave me. That I linked that video from Dungeon yes, Coaster? Yes, I, I, I bought the book for it, so I'm, I want to get specific really? herb. Really? Wait, <laughs> you got a herbalism book? I got... Uh, it's, a, a, it's the homebrew a, stuff. Yeah, it is a um, potion brewing book. Oh, shit. Can you link that to me? I can sh send you the PDF as well. Alright. I didn't even look at it. I, was I listened. Cool. I listened to it because I've seen like a few of the players, you know, like you especially, and also Ulamar in our other game, are really into potion making and stuff. So I figured I'd link you that video. I listened to the guy. Um, I don't know exactly what you want to do, but I'm sure there's like a herbalist around. We'll start off with Exodus now. Hey. Evie, where are you going? 
Or are you just kind of getting ready for the wedding? Do you have to go get fitted still? Yeah, I'm, we're going to the dress shop. Okay, let's go to accident first, I guess. All right. <clears throat> With a tailor. Just have to switch around some of the audio here. You walk into the magic shop accident, it's like humming. Um, an elvish woman who brands the mark of the Slaver's Guild comes up to you as you enter in. You stick out like a sore thumb. Your heavy footsteps. Do you wear boots or anything like that? Um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be wearing large boots. You wear like the plate. you wear plate mail, right? Yeah, I wear full plate. Yeah, so it's like the shuckle of metal, you know, covering over like your clawed feet. That this the plate mail had to be specially made for your feet, right? Yeah. It's like, like something like that as you walk through. You know, the slave woman says, "May I help you, sir?" Yes, I'm here to trade. What do you want to trade for? Well, when I last spoke with Rashad. He had a full plate of magic in stock for 2,500 gold. I'm looking to get it now. My name is Anahar. I'm the lead slave of Rashad. I'm here is to help he you. around? Unfortunately, he is preparing himself for the wedding at this time. Very well. Will you be able to get it for me? Did you hear that Ian Parnish, the king, is getting married today? Yes. It's a truly grateful day. Istra apparently was found. I didn't know that the king and, and one of his daughters were lovers at one point. Sure, if that's what you want to believe. What is this? Did you say you wanted? You look around, there's just like lots of like gadgets and gizmos. Imagine like one of those little things on the desk that like spins back and forth, kind of in the yeah. background, you know? Uh, I was trying to get a plus one plate armor. Plus one armor? Full plate? You have to make a d20 roll, you have to roll 15 or higher for it to be in stock. You get one roll per week. Okay. Per week? Oof. Oh, come on. Otherwise. Cross my fingers for you, buddy. Hey, let's fucking go. Wow, right on <laughs> the money. Excellent. I have it over here. They like she takes you over, it's like a gleaming what does it look like, accident? Uh let's go with the bright silverish uh tone of color and um very plain. Um and I guess that be custom fit for me so be very large and bulky one of the knights from Samarkand came by the other day and there's deserters there fleeing the city where exactly again Samarkand they're taking the boats across the sea where is Samarkand it's south of here, my lord. She's probably like five foot two or something, so she's you have to like really look down at her. You know, you're uh, like a you're like an NBA basketball player, like almost looking straight down at her. And she's like this. <laughs> huh. The height difference is apparent. But she's dressed in fine clothing. Where's Summercon? Summercon is south oh, of here. Okay. Oh fuck! I I know exactly where that. I would have known exactly where that is. Oh my lord! Hey, you haven't heard? No. What am I supposed to have heard? The the genie king Rizu has conquered Summerkand. Oh, Christ! Well then, that is interesting. The people around here are scared and talking about it, worried if the army of the genie will. Come north, just like the times of old during the dark time. 
<laughs> invasion of the buddy. <laughs> What's up? Oh, shoot. Future doctor. Future doctor, he can do it. All right, go take your shower. <laughs> they, just, they just got back. <laughs> Are your vitals good? Yes, he's just making sure. He's he's been doing it. He's been doing a great job lately. Just in life in general, he's been doing great. Okay, sorry, accident. I. Oh, you're good. The genie king has taken over Samarkand, and now the knights are even fleeing here, and that's why one of the knights gave us his armor. Well, it is what it is, I suppose. Yeah. Always seems to be something going wrong. Why don't you roll to see if Ad how Adeline's parents are? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> general D20. Isn't that yes. for, for a shadowing a bit? So, Adeline isn't here, but of course we would roll, have her roll it. If you roll less than a 10, the parents have been killed. Whoa! 19. The uh, parent, no, my good rolls are done. Apparently, the king and queen of Samarkand have fled. And they're on the run, heading south. Is that all you know of them? She holds out her hand. Very well. I'll give her <laughs> one gold. Uh, yeah, I'll give her one gold. Fuck it. Oof, wow, you're being generous. I know. <laughs> this, 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 the slaves from the ship say that they are running and then fleeing across the desert. It must be dangerous. <laughs> Worth what I just paid. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> they must be traveling to the other city out there in the south that's worth a little more now as for the armor I was last told by Rashad it would have been 2500 is this price still good well we do have our fees that we have to charge of course <laughs> Unless, of course, you, you owe him a favor. No, I'm not much for giving favors. Make a pers persuasion roll. I roll a d20 to counter your roll. See how much they negotiate. I roll very high. Oh, wow. mama. I rolled, I, I, roll I rolled an 18. You tie. So if you tie, you actually beat. The player is always given advantage. So the player uh, wins. Yes. So roll a d4. Or do you want me to roll? I can. I uh, just did it two. Okay. Two, so 20% over the price. So standard price. So I think 20, it'll be 3,000 gold. The plate mail. God damn, these guys uh, are breaking us over the cove. Uh, let's just give the 2,000 gold pieces. This and... looks like a captain's armor. Maybe one of the cavalry. Then how, let's, uh... All right, let me go to um, Kordar, right? Yep. So you're in the middle of the town square, like, asking around and stuff. You're looking for the herbalist? You find the herbalist shop. There any? Oh, uh, excuse me. Are, are you the one who sells uh, herbs this place? Must be, like, an old lady who just, like, deals a lot with, like, flowers and things like that. Mm -hmm. She's, like, tending to a garden of some kind. The garden has like vine ropes and strings and things. All these like raised beds, you know, with two by fours essentially or milled lumber put together by, you know, just standard iron nails connected together with fertile soil in there, Kordar. She's in there watering. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you say? Oh, uh, uh. I'm guessing you're the one who sells uh, herbs around this place? Uh, yes. What are you looking for? Sage? This or um, hollow? There's a... Mary couple. Th there's a couple that are common, but there's a few ones that might be not around of here. Have you ever heard of things called like sativa moss and scorperia? I haven't it's, even added into the system. But. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm just say, saying this now. They're they are considered common, but they're not from this region, though. 
You have to make a D20 roll. Again, the roll is 15 or higher. Okay. The rest of the stuff are common in the, these areas, so I would assume the rest of the stuff she would yeah, have. Yeah, the, the climate for this is, like again, like kind of like southern Italy as we go into the mountains. It's mm -hmm. different, but we're actually near the coast. Yeah, that's why. The other ones I want are from the coast. So or you can just find them yourself. <laughs> that too. Not high enough. 14. Not high enough. She's like, I'm sorry, it's not in. We have some of these other herbs. So she has those other common herbs that are in there. Yeah, so there's like, there's six different herbs, but they're common. So I want to get a total of, the, uh, so it's actually, a total of nine. Each one's like, a, there's So I'll do the same thing, each. right? Yeah. You have to roll a persuasion roll. You have to beat my roll. Not very persuasive. Or roll 13. Uh, maybe this old lady is in it as well. I rolled a 9. So we roll, and so you didn't beat it, so I roll a D6 plus 1. So Jesus. it's 70% over market price. Oh. But it is herbs, but Herbs. things are common. So yes. What, see, it's something we need but to they still, out they, later. they still charge margin over the asking price. So the way I figured is whatever price is listed there, if there is a price, she charges you 70% of her asking price for the bid, right? Yeah. Or the cost of it. So I would, because the thing is they don't have a market price for I'm, it. I'm but there's sorry. Some... You don't look like you're from around here. The, the orcs were here not too long ago and they destroyed my garden. And that's why everything is so expensive. The merchants are buying everything up. Now that the port is open. Oh, that'll be no problem. Just how much is it in total? You have to tell me. I don't know the what thing the is like, is. Uh, is it like 50 golden herb or something? Uh, Probably wow. 5, 10, 15, 30, about 45 in total, I would guess. So, 90 gold. You're about to make an old really rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I can retire and close early I'll today. Oh, <laughs> hundred nine platinum. She she takes it. She's like, oh my! I didn't expect this from you. I just expected you to get some of this rot weed. <laughs> no, no. I need the proper materials. <laughs> well, you you could buy yourself some shoes at least. You just have like some flip flops on or something. No, I have shoes. Oh. I have to check my glasses. I can go now and get some. Well, you have a lovely day. And I'll walk off. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> okay, Azul <laughs> and Evie are doing their own thing. Uh, Evie, what are you guys doing? You walk in like the city is like there's like people just like on the ground, you know, like there's still quite a lot of refugees here, but. People are finding work once again. Like they're either heading out to the farms to do like manual labor, or just working as like dock hands, or worse, they get captured at night and turn, be turned into slaves, something like that. I think it'd be best to head to the. I don't know where you're from, Evie, but <laughs> Evie, you see like a boy. He like throws like you know a mud pie or something at like a half orc. Go back to home, you tusk. <laughs> Is this how your people behave? Well, it's... The orcs raided the city not too long ago. Well, had take, they were in charge of the city not too long ago, so... Hate still thrives within the humans. Pity. All these people. Yes, uh, but they weren't very kind people. Now let's get to this stop. Hopefully it's. You want to go to the the security. tailor? Yeah. What's Find the name? Tailor there is. Azul, what's the name of the tailor? I do not know. You want? You're not going to be creative about it. Oh, I can be creative about it. Yeah, oh. be creative about it. Uh Sylvanas sharp sh shoots. Sharp <laughs> sh sharp shoots. Sharp shoots. Okay. Savannah's sharp shoots. Sharp suits and dresses. Savannah. <laughs> you walk in, the smell is like kind of like men's warehouse. It's pretty clean, but it's still like, I want to say they probably have like 
tiled floor. You know, it's got to be kind of a nicer place, especially where Rashad recommended you go. The city is pretty large. I don't really have the name. I can't. I have to pull up some like regular Joe Blow shop for ambience. We'll just kind of turn down this ambience maybe as it kind of comes through the window. Yeah. Ding -ling -ling. Savannah's there. She's got to be like a young, attractive dwarvish woman. You know? Are we going to be in the world of Token now where all the dwarves have beards? Even the women? <laughs> That's something they were ragging on the rings of power about. <laughs> what a missus! Come in, come in, my lady. <laughs> she sounds like a man almost, right? She's got a beard. Hello. She's got to have like a lot of testosterone flowing through her veins. <laughs> She's like, what, a, what are you, my lady? My name is Evie, and I have been sent by Rod al Hafid to get a dress for the king's wedding. Oh, yes, he sent his uh, servant over, my lady. She does like a curtsy to you. I'll do one back to her. What does the dress look like? She says, this is made of the finest fibers. Apparently, you gave something to Rashid. Is that true? You gave him the item, right? Yes. So they, what she gives you is basically a glamour dress. The dress can change into any color or anything like you want, right? It's kind of like a dress that like changes and it can change some simplicities of the thing. So like if it's a strapless dress, it like suddenly has straps or something like that. If it's backless, then it can like become, it can have a back to it and it can change colors and add certain ornamentation, but it can't really increase like value. Like you can't add gems or jewels to it or things like that, but it's like an illusion magic, you know, that's embedded into the clothing. Very cool. So it will be kind of like um, what you would see in like the court of like Louis the Fifteenth. That kind of like very tight bodice, but like very large flowy skirt um, with lace and. Lots Does she have of to tool. like kind of like crack you, you know, and like you know get the corset thing or the oh, tighten yeah, you down? Definitely, definitely got to have a corset. You like hold um, your breath in as she tightens you down, Azul. It's like it looks pretty daunting, you know. <laughs> And you're glad you you thank you thank yourself for a minute that you're still a man, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just want to do for beauty. Too much, too much for me. What color is it? Um, it is red and black. Cool. Let's go back to Exodus in the magic shop. So, how it works, Exodus, if you want, um, you get to roll again on the magic item chart. Since you pass your first roll, okay. If you want to look for something else, uh. So the next thing. The armor is like on you. I'm assuming now, right? Yeah. Do you want to sell the old armor? Yeah. Uh, so I think let me take a look here. I think the problem with the armor cost that I had, by the way, accident, is plate mail armor. Is it one thousand gold to enchant? Uh, no idea. Armor enchantment. Damn it. I think it's I think I'll have to work out the price later on that. Because I was messing around with enchantments and the idea of enchantments. Like what right. the actual cost is for a one plus one enchantment for armor. Do you want to sell your old armor is what I'm asking? Yes, I do want to sell the old so armor. So you sell it at cost, which is I think fifteen hundred gold. Yeah. It's it's listed as fifteen hundred in default, so That's right. So I think I think the plus one armor is a is it a thousand gold then, right for the enchantment? Uh, that's what you told me the first time around. Okay. So well, I, I'll, if we need to retcon it, I'll go. You can just deduct yeah, it from whatever fine. gold that you sell, right? Um, so uh, she says she's looking at the armor and stuff. It's like polished off, you know, because it has to be like sales presentable, right? It has like probably some like Ara um, Arabic like inscriptions across it too, in a way. They have been made into it because it's from Samarkand, you know, the night one of the oh, nights yeah. there. It's got yeah. like inscriptions of like probably like some horses and things like that. But the color is what you said, like silver. And it gleams like off of the, the, the light that passes through the window and some of the magical torches inside of the shop and candles. And it sparkles. She says, Oi. she like looks up to you and she says, 
You are a mighty knight. You have like your no. great sword on, you know. Well, it's, um, will you be able to take my old armor? Of course. We buy and sell in all types of things here. The iron links are always in, you know, always have a price for anything. She says as she see the mark on her face. How much for this? Now I'll be holding up my armor to give it to her. It's fifteen hundred gold. Yeah. Okay, no. Yeah. She and says, then, "Would you like? Would you like money, or would you like us to write a note so you can cash in at the at the gilded bank?" I'll take the money. Okay. Um, let's uh, see if we have. We should have that amount, and she does. They have that amount. Um. Then next thing you think about Arno's cup though, and like how it's like twenty three thousand gold is like a huge sum of money. Like it probably is going to be more difficult to just get that type of cash in your hand. Right. Ask it for it to be converted into platinum. <laughs> the, just wait. Um. So I'm gonna look at my. I wrote it down on my hand notes. Do you have a ring of protection? Or a siren song liar. You get to roll on one of the items. Which one do you want to roll on? Uh, either you decide. Which one do you want more? Hold on. Let me see what my AC is. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the uh. The other liar would be better, I think. Or suppose. Let's a magical it. liar, uh, huh? Need to go to 15. The wars and the refugees going from all over the lands have displaced many people. And now the genie king, Rizu, is fulfilling the darkness's destiny by continuing her campaign across Vagrax. Many soldiers and would-be travelers and adventurers die, of course. Think back to Istra, maybe. And how she might be marrying the king. So you have to make a roll. Well, actually, what we'll do is we'll be dirty about it. We'll increase the DC every time you roll. So the DC is 16. Oh. Shit. Would you like me to put an order in, sir? The elf sure. slave says. It'll take probably a few weeks. I roll 3d8. Oh. She says, so, I mean, you have to put a deposit down, then we start making rolls as the guild goes out and tries to find and acquire the item. Uh, how much of a deposit is required? Well, um, I don't know, probably we're half. This is something that with, with, with Rashad not here, I would probably wait till he returns so you can negotiate with him further. There's talks of Someone of your stature and nobility, my lord, I'm sure he wants you to do something for him. We'll wait on it. Yes, my lord. And by chance, are you like, sp is your visor up? So you're like speaking through the plate visor? Is it down? Oh, I wouldn't, I would leave the helmet. I'm not gonna wear a helmet. It's like in your hand, like a basketball. Uh, I guess <laughs> I, I'm not, I would never, I'm never gonna wear a helmet. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, by chance, would you happen to be willing to trade my maul for a great sword? Um, if I could just do a one to one exchange, or am I going to still need to roll for that? Or because the maul is a plus one, it's magical. Yeah. So they want to trade for a plus one great sword. Since you could. failed the roll. All um, right. Unless Fair someone enough. else, unless Evie wants to give Exodent a chance to use her her, her role, you see what I'm saying? So each player can make yeah. a role. Yeah, and he can. I can. So roll go ahead, Exodent. You you can. Why don't we have Evie roll then? So Evie uses her role in the magic shop to determine if it's there. What is it? It's a DC 15, D20. Just right straight. Okay. Straight D20, because it's just like if it's in the shop, you know. Because magical items are very rare still. But for those who have coin, like obviously they can still find it. Oh, it's so close to being 18. Again, again, my lord, I'd have to put an order in. 
the, the enchanters are, are trying to come back into business, and it's difficult to find powerful mages and those artificers who want to craft such great goods. I guess I'll wait for Rashad again for that. And, uh... She takes like a note, you know, on her little pad. I need a, I need a magical weapon. We're going to get tough guys. <laughs> that would be all for me. <gasps> Thank you, my lord. Oh, uh, go ahead and walk out. You walk out, it's like the shanking of like armor. <laughs> Your new suit of armor is like good. As you walk into like the cobble streets, it must have just rained the other day. Your armor's already starting to get a little dirty. You know, the boots or whatever. The the the, the glaives or whatever they're called. Um, let's go to Kordar, right? Mm-hmm. Kordar, what do you want to do? Um Gosh. Um I you got, would, so you would, got some herbs. You bought the herbs with nine platinum. Yeah, I would uh I would probably find Exiden. Okay. In uh You find oh, Exiden. Uh, Here's how we do it. We just find Exiden, you know. Oh, you guys decide you, uh, to meet up at a place and you met up. Are you uh done here now, Exiden, or you still have more shopping to do? <clears throat> Finished for now. Well, I did get some herbs. I wanted to try to make something, but I need a more quiet place. Do you know any inns we can stay in temporarily while we wait for them? That one I'm familiar with. We could go to the giant bar. Anything that could work, just so I can have a bit of time and peace, just so I can create this potion. So, uh, I guess we'll be going to the giant bar. Gonna go to the giant bar? Mm -hmm. I forgot what the dwarven innkeeper there was like. It's like during the day, but sailors are like coming by. It's like the port city, right? There's sailors coming in and out. As you guys walk in, you hear like, um, you know, a sailor say, let me turn on some like tavern music. Uh, when we walk in, I mean, is it going to be really rowdy? Um, I'd have to roll pretty high for that to happen, especially during the day. Okay, I mean, okay. sailors are coming in at all hours. It's kind of like truck drivers, right? Okay. Traveling all that. I actually roll high. There's like a fucking fight going on. Like, <laughs> you see, like this guy, like clock as you walk in the door, like a guy, like hits your armor accident and like stumbles off. Uh, I would pretty much ignore it if it was like a weak hit. Uh, just turn a quarter. Well, I don't suppose this is the environment you were looking for. Expected to be. Bit bigger. You, you see, like a fucking chair gets slammed over, and the bar keeps like, "Stop that racket right now before I get the guards." I'll just step over the people that are fighting if I'm big enough, <laughs> and uh, I'll just uh, head towards the keeper. Damn it! I want to use this music for the wedding, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just play this music because it says it's an amp made of tatter. The bards are kicking up. Shut the fuck up! But what'd you say about my mama? <laughs> you see, just the fight is still going on. I rolled really high. So they, they, it's like uppercuts, I think. Accident just like pushes through these guys, like pushes over a few guys. You're just going up to the innkeeper or the barkeep? Yeah. It's just, and she, she comes up to Accident and she has like a full beard too, I guess, as a dwarf. And she's like, Do you mind? Help me out here! She says to Accident. What you gonna pay? Yeah, I, I got your tab still, don't I? Fine. Your friend, that one, the crazy one, ran off and didn't pay me the rest. You owe me. You're speaking about Adeline. All right. I'll turn around and uh, I'll just start methodically, like, picking up people being a rack and just throwing them out. You just like, these, like, drunks are just, like, fighting over one another. A few of them stumble. You just grab a few by the collars and they're like, fucking heaving them out. The other bouncer or whatever there is, like Mickey or something like that. Another guy with a big pot belly. But he's, like, strong, you know? He's, like, worked, you know? He's got big hands, too. But he's, like, a human, you know? He's like, yeah, it's tough work, but someone's got to do it. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you go up, So you go back up to the barkeep, and she's like, like, what, what, thank you so much, my lord. 
I barely recognize you with your suit of armor. Looks like your travels to the mine were very fortuitous, weren't they not? Yeah, the mine. It was quite, uh, quite the find there. Hmm, I can tell. You look like a real lord now. You just need a lady. I she just strokes her hair. I do not enjoy being <laughs> told I look like a lord at all. Uh, so, mm, I'm guessing... One of the horse that. masters of Summerkind. Oh, no. <laughs> You've been all over the world, have you? Here. Yeah. She, like, pours a shot of, like, whiskey, you know, or something. She's like, this one's on me. <laughs> I kind of lean in between them. She's Excuse like, me. she ignores you. Is she like you finally just like get into her, her your periphery like you slowly like come into her face she's like she looks irritated you know she's like what do you say to her hello well I was looking <clears throat> excuse I was, me <laughs> I, I was wondering if we could have a room for the night <sighs> back to business I suppose hey keep it down over there she like says she just kind of gets back to work she gives you guys some keys she's just she hands them over to accident Try not to throw up in it. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to we'll go to I Evie. I remember and, that. <laughs> we'll go to Evie and Azul, I guess. Evie and Azul, you're just like out on the road or something, right? I think we should yeah. probably take a coach to meet up with, uh, you know, or what time is it? I guess you you look very uh, stunning now. Like you're in your glamour dress, getting ready for the wedding. And like you're trying to pick it up so like you don't get it dirty. The they have hailed a cab for you. The cab like pulls up. It's like a coach, you know, with a couple horses or mules. You know, just like do that. And it's by this guy who's got like, you know, just like a peasant with some clothes on it. He looks over at you and he has the marking of like a slave, you know. Where are you going, my lady? Where, where can I take you? I am supposed to uh, be attending the king's wedding. She, he like gets off the thing, you know, and he puts the straps or whatever in like a container, and he like walks over, like opens the door, and he says, he stares at the other slaves, like, "Aren't you going to fucking open the door?" Of course. I was he like tried to whisper it. Yes, of course. You get fucking lash for that. <laughs> he, he's like, this "Don't mind me." Is. And he like just rolls his eyes as he opens the door, and you guys like get in the coach, right? <laughs> he like kind of coughs or like, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I'm just come a little under the weather. Uh, we in the coach now? Better. Yeah, you're. It's like an open coach, though, you know. Okay. okay. Uh, it's nothing like too fast. It's like a wagon more than anything, right? Gotcha. Uh, as we are on the drive there uh, to the wedding, which is in two hours, we're getting there a little early. You can, you want to go to the castle? That's where, where the wedding we... is held. Or you guys want to meet up with Exodin and Kordar? But we, we don't want to go there early. Uh, I do want to visit the magic shop to see if they got a, a, a magic bow I can take. And, uh... Do you want to go to the boulder? Why does a slave want to go to the boulder? Milady? He's speaking for me. What do you need a bowl for? Hold on. We are looking for something specific. Yes, milady? He, like, like slaps the horses. Giddy yeah! And they, like, fucking take off, like, trotting off down the street. And you guys go to the boulder. The same elven woman meets you there. It's like damn near you almost bumped right into accident. Yeah, in fact, you see him like walking off to the to the, the <laughs> short, you know, to the bar, and he tells you about where he's going, right? So you know where he's going with Kordar, of course. You could you can barely miss these two like yokels because they're like two giants walking amongst a sea of humans. <laughs> okay, here we go. Magic shop again. The slave comes up to you. Uh, do you open the door for uh, Lady Evie as she comes hey. in this time? Oh, definitely. Definitely here. <laughs> where I need to play the part. Definitely here, yeah. But you're, like, armed, right? Like, you have, like, a... Yes. You have I your got weapons longbow, and stuff? two short swords. I got, I'm armed to a teeth. So you look more like a soldier slave kind of thing, right? Like a fighting slave? Mm-hmm. 
Interesting. Maybe Exodent has branded you that way as well. With like maybe a little dot or two, you know. My kills. Ten kills, ten dots. <laughs> The, uh, the woman Take confirmed kills. <laughs> the woman approaches Azul, actually, and she says, because the slave doesn't want to directly address Evie quite yet, she says, how may I help my lady? What are you looking uh, for? My lady is looking to acquire a magical bowl uh, for her servant. Hmm. There's been many soldiers that have fled from Samarkand as the city has come under siege, and we might just have that in. And she starts, like, fiddling through things. Roll a d20. All right, let's see if I can make The only it. one who hasn't rolled a d20 is Kordar. At this point. So it's a 15 or higher. Ah, so close. 13. So they, have, they have to have it in. That means it's in stock. It's like, would my lady like to put down a deposit? Oh, it's you, my lady. She, like, recognizes you. She, like, does a little curtsy. Oh, your dress looks wonderful. You think you will like it? Hmm, Yes. I know exactly what you need. And she like takes you over to like a little shelf with like ointments and things like that. And she hands you like one of these little perfume thingies, you know, with the little squirter. <laughs> she says, don't tell Rashad this, but this will drive him crazy if you want. You want to put it on? Of course. You like just, you know, you like <laughs> spray it, I guess, like around the neck and like rub it on your wrists and so forth to kind of get the scent going. Azul, it smells pretty good. You're like a man of the woods. Like you're like you know you're like Aragorn. You smell probably like closer to pig shit, right? Because you're just like a camper or something. Yeah. yeah. When's the last time Azul took a bath? <laughs> wow, it's been weeks since we were in the <laughs> cave. I guess like the waterfall is the only thing that's gotten his uh, his clean, but that's like it doesn't have soap or anything out there. So it just smells of I don't know the woods. Mm, I'm sorry. There's no bow, though. Would you like? To, would my lady like to put a deposit down? How much is the deposit? What type of bow are you looking for? Uh, longbow, plus one. You just want a plus one longbow? Yeah. Okay, let me look Please. it up. I need a magical weapon because we're going against uh, tougher enemies as we level up. How I price all the plus one stuff is you, how I usually price it as a thousand plus whatever the original cost of the thing is. And I've tried to think about the enchanting system a little bit too, Exodent. How I'm thinking about it is like each layer you put on top of the item, you add another 20% cost to the item. So you want, say if you want like a flame tongue plus one longsword, you'd add the flame tongue enchantment plus the plus one enchantment plus the longbow. Each subsequent enchantment or it's 20% more, base, just like base raw cost. Kind of understand That's that? Yeah, that's fair. That's just an idea I've thought of. You know, it's not game testing. Honestly, I would I would say it's more than it should be more than twenty percent since well, you have stacking what, effects. What what would uh what what should it be at? You think? I'm, like, I'm thinking like honestly like fifty percent. You want to play hardcore Game of Thrones? I rules. mean, well, <laughs> you got two. You're stacking two effects on one item. That becomes way more valuable than them individually. I agree with that. That is so true. I just started Stacking working on the enchantment shit. stuff. A little bit. Maybe so, like yeah. each enchantment, it goes up like like twenty five for the first, and then the second, uh, and then. If you, and can, I, oh, if you can go more, then yeah, I would definitely. And it's kind of how like artifacts <laughs> are created. So like at a certain point, like you get these like major and minor artifact benefits they call it, um, which they they have a randomized table in the DMG about it. But it's like how to actually craft like super powerful items. You know, like how does it? Why does? How does that make sense? And so it gives players the flexibility to create their magic items. And use their gold on stuff. Um, so it's a thousand just for a plus one bow. And Azul, you think about something like you put together with the insight roll earlier. You know that Alarian, the leader of the Scarlet Wolves, is in Stormbrook. She's at the graveyard where the hideout is. And she has your family's longbow. And she's like, would my lady like to put a deposit down? It would be 1,200 gold. Sure, we'll take, put the deposit down. Uh, do you hand her the gold? Yes. Hmm. Milady carries this type of cash on her? Well, you can, I guess, if you have this strong man, of course, helping you. Oh, good looking. Check me well. A little rough around the edges, I'm sure. 
Uh, this will gives her a wink. <laughs> she like just nods. She's like not allowed to like really patronize, patronize, you know, flirt with other slaves and stuff. That's outlawed or whatever, I guess. So mark it on your sheet if you actually have the cash on hand to actually put down the full deposit. So what I'll do is I'll roll 3d8 in secret, and that's how many days it takes to get the plus one bow. And if you sell it back to them, for instance, they um, would just pay you a thousand. Right? So see, there's like the margin there. L Lady Evie is very eloquent. She doesn't need to make a persuasion roll to actually uh, barter for the item. Where are you guys going now, or you guys want to stay in the shop? I think we can go. You guys want to go to the, 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 the giant bar and meet up with Accident, or are we just heading to the castle? Uh, I want to RP our way uh, back real quick. Okay, what do you want to do there, Sewell? Um, Are we out of the shop? To... Yes, we're out of the shop. Okay. Uh, when you make a deal with uh, Ian Parnish, uh, if things are not turning in your favor, there's a piece of information that he would find incredibly valuable. Um, uh, there's artifacts that are he's most likely searching for. I know the location of piece of an artifact, I guess. Or maybe another whole entire thing. I don't know how it works. Um, he's looking for a finger. Uh, it's it has a magical yeah. ability. And Who's ever touched this finger uh, eagerly wants to search for another one or hold on to the one he has. Uh, Rizu, uh, a genie from across the land, see, has one of them. Things ever go south. He was now turning your favor. Offer information on where this item is. Mostly trade. Even the whole bag, uh, the bag, just to have this information. You really want to give him the location? The two would uh, very much kill each other, uh, trying to get the other finger from each other. I don't think uh, Ian Parnish is strong enough to face a genie. Most likely, he might die. is definitely information to barter with. Apparently he already has one of the fingers. Or two. I don't know. You know, we know he has one. He took one from us. Hopefully the cup will be enough and he'll remember us very little and we can get on our way to finding how to stop him. Great. Uh, after the deal was made and we retrieved the gold from the temple, uh, I would definitely like to speak to the group about staying here for a time. Uh, you were not here. Uh, I discussed this with... Uh, uh, who? Fuck, what's her name? Uh, uh, <laughs> Adeline? Adeline. I discussed it with Adeline uh, that there is a bow I need to retrieve that is in the hands of a person within the city. Uh, an artifact. My family. An heirloom. It's very powerful. And I want it back. If you could trade this information to Ian for. Does he has? Do you think he could get this bow for you? I don't know. I don't want Ian Parnas to know about it. Not this item. He can have all the fingers. All the power that those fingers will give him, but not this bow. This bow is my family's. How are you going to retrieve it? 
bargain is most hopeful I can uh, hope to achieve. If I had to, I would go kill the person who wants it. What does this bow do? I don't know. It's, it's a family secret. I wasn't allowed to uh, know of it till I was to um, have it my, for myself. It uh, was given to us by a uh, dragon, Dragon of the West. Um, it was a beautiful bow, uh, shining white. Uh, it resembled a dragon. Got the door dash showing up. Ignore the person. <laughs> Ignore him. He brought your uh, he brought your uh, food, your Burger King. <laughs> yep. Hey man, adventures got to eat. Got uh, bar made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go back to the bar. What are you guys doing inside the bar? The giant bar. Um, I'm heading upstairs to brew my potion. It will take one hour to do it. Okay. DC is fifteen as well. Cool. Are you trying to use some of Dungeon Coach's rules? Uh, yeah, it has a, a check DC for every single potion. Cool. Wow, incredible. Roll it up. And it, it has this thing called... It, it's re, it's replacing survival, so I'm using survival for this. You need to hook me up with that uh, potion thing, man. Yeah, it's called... Yeah. Uh, I know, I want to get his... Uh, his uh, he's coming out with... I like Al Camer's Almanac of all things. Which is a combination of all the rules that he's come up with. Yeah. And by the way, I was using this for a minor regeneration potion. Sure. Does it just like heal you 1d4 or something like that? Uh, every round it th does half of my proficiency modifier. So for me right now, that would be one every round for How one minute. How long does it last for? For one minute? Yeah, that's totally balanced. That's fine. Cool. Minor regeneration. I like that. That's Anything it. else? Cool. So you passed it. You're up there for an hour crafting. So that'll take us to um, three o'clock. And my things are bugging out a little bit. Exodin, what are you doing? Uh, so after Corridor leaves to go do his thing, um, I'm probably just gonna be chilling in the lobby. I'm gonna be sitting in a chair, just uh, leaning back and watching the people and just looking up the ceiling waiting for him okay um why don't you roll a d20 if you roll a let's say a 14 or higher um something happens you meet someone maybe you recognize roll an 18 mm -hmm. do you remember that like woman that arno like shrugged off that came in the bar a while back and she oh. she like approached you and you were there with arno so they rec she recognizes you and you see her come up to you she like comes and she's like is this seat taken that depends what interest do you have with it she's not like alone or anything either which is kind of strange she and is alone she's not alone oh okay she has like a couple like you know it's kind of intimidating the way she's approached you right She's like come up and she's like said like is this seat taken and there's got to be like a couple other guys like around you know just to like affirm that like the seat isn't taken you know. Oh, I'm gonna cross my arms. Well, go ahead, take your seat. She's dressed in like robes, you know, like um, simplistic but dark robes um, with a hem of like brown. Um, the hood is she is hooded with it over so like that's maybe, see her face or is it yes like, she's okay. like she's like revealed herself she is a human and you recognize who it is it's the person that tried to approach arno he says strange meeting you here again she takes a seat i don't see why that would be strange hmm. i see the land of zen has been quite kind to you you're wearing brand new armor that type of armor attracts a lot of attention around these parts. So be it. Is there something you want from me? Yes. We what? fought. Well, we did follow you. 
after you left. And you were heading to the graveyard. For what we don't know. But we did see Istra with you. That assassin almost killed her, didn't she? Oh yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> I did enjoy putting him down, I will say. Was he one of yours? She leans in, she's like, no, she wasn't. Uh, well then I guess there's no hot feelings about it then. But isn't it strange that the king is trying to now marry someone he tried to kill? Who are you exactly? Do you really want to know? I did just ask, didn't I? Hmm. Where's your friends at? Oh, that's not important. You can just speak to me about it. Hmm. It's come to our attention that the king has found another finger. Is this yeah. true? Yeah. Unfortunately. I get the feeling you're not on his side. Shall we find somewhere else quieter to speak so there's not so many ears around? Well, I guess we'll go ahead and go to my room then. Do you want to go? Are you with Corridor or you have your own separate room? Uh, she gave us two separate keys, right? So I'll, it's up yeah, to you. Most. Yeah, then yeah, I'll have my own separate room. Okay. So you, go, you and her go up to the room. She has two other guys that are like robed up. They all look okay. like a part of the same group, you know? It's yeah. kind of like one of those guys trying to approach you, you know, just I'm trying to think of like a MLM type meeting type, you know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You no. know, something like that. You know, the other guys are just kind of like shuffling along. They both wear like sandals. They, 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 she comes into your room. She says, can my associates come in with me? I feel a lot safer. Sure. They come in with you into the room. The room is pretty packed, you know, pretty tight. You know, you just have like a standard bed, like a medieval bed, and you know, made out of a wooden frame. I had to like turn down the music now, it sounds we're upstairs. <laughs> it's a little quieter up here. She says, what do you know about those fingers? That nothing good comes of them. Hmm. We would pay very much for you to give us those fingers. Oh, I don't acquire those fingers for others. You desire armor and weapons. What else does a man like you desire? You seem like a self The armor and the weapons are a tool for an end. That's all it's for. And what end might that be? Of my own business. There are things greater at play here than you even understand. And I don't care. You don't care? No. And no amount of money can entice you. Oh, I didn't say that. Well, but name your price for the fingers. What do you intend to do with these fingers? That is our business. Fair enough. Let's see. You want us to deal with Ian Parnish in whatever way we see fit? I do not trust the king. I've heard terrible rumors. People going missing around the keep. And now he has found Istra, most strange. And trying to marry her seems like a power grab to me. These are no concerns of ours, though. We just care about the fingers. Let's say... 30,000 gold for each finger. Hmm. Make a persuasion roll. Twenty-one. Wow, accident. Wow! I roll you are on the high today, brother. I roll a natural 20 to counter you. God damn it! Wow! <laughs> hey. um, but I don't think... I mean, I think that still 
I'm going to give Exodon the benefit of the doubt on this one, because he rolled pretty well. 30,000 gold is quite a high price, even for something that you do not even understand yourself. Oh, I understand enough to know what a good price is. So, hmm. 30,000 gold. The, the other two guys. Let me confer with them. I would interrupt her and say, each. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> this is quite a sum. The other, this is the, the master said to pay anything for them. Can I hear? Am I able to? Yeah, you like overhear it. They're like in this tight room okay. with you, you know? Okay, okay. They say, okay. Greet her. Let's give him the sack. They, she like pulls out like a cloth that's like black, you know? It's got like strange ruins on it. Something beyond your understanding is just a cell sword. She says, when you find the fingers, wrap them in this. Hey, we'll agree uh... to it. Where should we meet once you find, once you retrieve the fingers for us? Oh, I don't believe it's going to be any time soon. Are you expecting this today? <laughs> what should we do? Give him, give him one of the stones. They, she holds out like a stone. It has like some, and again, some inscriptions on it. You don't understand quite what it's all about. It's got to be the size of, like, a small rock like this. It's like, okay. once you find the, the fingers, reach out to us, and we will find you. I guess I'm supposed to do that with this. Of course. And what do I do with it? You must say the command word. And that would be... What is it, Exodus? You get to make it up. Oh. Uh, oh, I guess I'll go with, um, let's say I summon you to answer this deal. Sure. I was just thinking like a random, like Alakazam type thing. Oh. <laughs> like a command word, like a magical command word of some kind. But I guess okay, it could be uh, just like a thought, okay. like what you're saying is like a thought almost. Well, it's just like, I command to answer you. So you have to just yeah. think this word. And as soon as you say that in your head, and, and you know she's like talking with you how to use it, she pulls out a stone herself, and the ruins begin okay. to glow. She says, "Excellent," and you hear like the echo of her voice through the stone. And so it's like it's you say excellent. There's like a little delay, you know, but you hear it. She says, "See you soon," and her friend she like shuffles out. What is Azul and Evie doing? Are we heading to the place? The coach is just waiting outside. Hmm. I think we should be on our way back, but I, I don't know. Uh, Tool uh, pauses for a moment. Uh, he knows what he's going to do is uh, deviating from the plan, but he goes back in real quick. To the magic shop? Yeah, back into the magic shop. Okay. Oh, sorry. Where's my lady at? Uh, she requested uh, another item. Uh, she's waiting in the coach. Uh, you have uh, a spell scroll to spell magic. Um, I'm sorry, my lord. We don't. You already made your roll, right? Oh, dang. I didn't think it for like a level one spell. It's a level two or three spell. The spell it's a magic level, is? spell magic's a level three spell, I think. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. My le I, I hate to refuse such a uh, the, the, the honored guest of the wedding for the uh, Lord of Rashad, but um, I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm sorry. The scrolls are out of stock, and there's rumors that Ian is trying to muster an army and requires all the items. She starts. She forgot about it. You like. She starts like coughing, like a little uncontrollably. She's like, <coughs> "Excuse me." She like walks away. Uh, I head back to the coach. Okay. Where to, my lady? The two like horses are there, like you know, ready to go. For the king's wedding. Mm. 
Yes, my lady. Yeah! <laughs> Snaps the thing. I don't know how to do the galloping sound effects. I know the guys, when they do it, the sound effects are like this, you know, on the table with the hose or whatever, like that. Um, Cordar, you're up there. An hour goes by. You know, you make the potion of regeneration. Are you guys going to the wedding or are we separating the group? And I'm just going to, you guys going to be spectators for this one? I'll be, spectator. be spectating. You guys seriously going to be spectators and you're not going to the wedding? Come on, dudes. Sneak your way in or something. Uh, Come on, we can make you guys more. You guys can disguise as slaves too. Did you guys you hear know, that D and D America. is a group game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to get killed. Fine, I will go to as an a animal. clothing store. Well, accident rolls an insight roll as he's worried about his own neck. Or I guess Azul can roll too because Azul's got like plus twenty <laughs> or something to his roll. I mean, DC is pretty low, so you think the king. Is going to kill you at the wedding accident in front of how many nobles? going to kill me, but I think it's not going to work out in our benefit if I'm there. Yeah, and in, in our in our other game, we have this guy. Um, his name was Kanan. He had the same thought process. He's like, "Well, this can only lead to one bad," and he just shot the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he just went full blown murder hobo. It's just like, yeah, this ain't going to turn out good. And he just started killing people. <laughs> <laughs> this went from A to Z. <laughs> okay, so Cordar, are we going to the wedding or? I, I want to stop by a clothing shop first and get some nice clothes. You want to buy some fine clothes? I think they're fifty gold. Yes, I'll I'll be okay with that. Okay, you buy. I'll some... think of, I'll think of something a nice description later. Did I write down the name of this place? I did, didn't I? Sharp suits and dresses. Vanus. Well, it might be a bit extra Savannah's. for my stature, <laughs> sure, though. Dresses. Yeah. So let's say like 70 gold. Savannah's like a name where she had like a sketchy past, maybe. <laughs> kind of one of those <laughs> names. Um, so yeah, you get your, you buy yourself some nice, fine clothes, Cordar, just in time for the wedding. Are we heading to the wedding, guys? Yeah. Yep. I will summon You're you going to the battle board. He'll be uh, my body guy. I'm going to be... I'm going to be spectating just to see what I'm going to be going, but I do not want to. Try, I'm going to try to avoid Ian Varnish. <laughs> You're going to stand out, man. You know you are. You're a oh, giant yeah. dragon. I do not want to provoke a fight with him. <laughs> oh, you, wear, you can wear the helmet. You'll never know. Uh, <laughs> I don't true. want to wear a helmet. <laughs> I have summoned you guys to the battle board of just the thing. The coach pulls up to the royal palace. I think I had a picture and I linked you guys of, I think I called it Whitewater. It's kind of like a cool, um, there's actually the castle name in our world anvil. It's Whitehaven, I think is the real name of it. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, this is, um, these creators do these awesome maps. Oh, this actually, you have my pulled up. Oh, I know them. Phil Spain. Here is the map of Whitehaven. It's a it's a beautiful castle that was ruined during the last war, and it was rubble. Now it's being rebuilt by the king. As you guys pull in on the, the carriage, you see Exit in and Corridor approaching like the lowly peasants they are by foot, of course, Evie. As you guys all meet uh, Rashad uh, outside of the building um, of the wedding hall that's inside of the um, essentially the fort slash castle. The castle is up like on a precipice against the shelf of the sea where the waves crash into it. Overlooking, you can see the port of Stormbook. It's right now about 4.30ish, we'll say, right? Um, the wedding officially starts at 5. But the king, of course, as Rashad says, does not like late. Anybody is showing up late. And again, he's kind of reiterated some danger with the king of being dangerous. Who else? Do I? I have Exodan, Azul. I don't. Do you have a new model, um, Evie, or no? I did make one, yeah. Or do you want me to just use the Istra one? I didn't know if you made a new model yet. I, I did. I, th I think I uploaded it. I don't know if I did or not. Is it uploaded? Because I don't know if you can yeah, only have one model at a time. No, you can have uh, How do you change them? I think I the way. Model. The thing is, I think the way you can link, from what I understand, you can only link one model in at a time. Um, 
So I don't know. I think do multiple. I don't know. You can only do that if you're the DM. But as the player, when you link your account, that's the way they prevent people from sharing all the models, I think. Uh, that's my guess. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll give Evie uh, kind of a kind of a nice model. Do you want me to use the Istra model for you for now, or do you want me to use another model? Use whatever. Okay, let's pull up the human model then. There we go. You can use whatever. Just pulling it up. Give you the classic model here. And I will give you, i make it unique, and then I'm going to assign it to the player. You guys do anything before we go in? Ah, uh, I just uh, I just want a general overview of the outside of the castle. That's possible. Like, I like how, linked you a picture. Like how, oh, I was curious. Like how like like how much is it built? Like tw like fifty percent back of the way, seventy. Like is it nearly like completed? Make an insight roll. Okay. Right. Oh, well. this is from James RPG Art. Does amazing uh, work. Eight. Unfortunately, not high enough. But it seems pretty well built. Like, because you're not like you grew up in like the swamps, right? Like, yeah. You're not like a master of like masonry. Oh shit! This wedding is inside. That is correct. Oh, this is getting worse all the time. I have summoned you guys to the board. Um, um, I don't have uh, Kordar in here, correct? You do. They do. I have Kordar here, but I don't see him in the, the tail Oh, I'm loading into the game okay. right now. What do you guys do? You meet Rashad as you pull up in your coach. Now, just Evie, you're just wearing the dress. You didn't say that you were wearing mm -hmm. the thingy, right? What? You weren't wearing the burqa or whatever? The veil. The veil. Oh yeah, I, 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 he asked me to put that on, so I'll put that on. Yeah. You put up like you actually the the lady gave you one before. It says stunning. Kind of like a gypsy look. Now Rashad, like I'll describe what Rashad Halamid looks like. Rashad is a merchant of the guild. He's from Vagrax, the southern continent of Zin, and I will link him here. And I will link him over here. He's just dressed like kind of in his merchant attire, which is still like fine clothing. He has a blue turban with like a peacock feather almost like on the top. Embedded are like some a few like purple jewels. He's got a sash. And of course, he wears like the tunic guard of the merchants. And I thought about the merchant guard, the merchant guild a little bit more. They're called the Iron Links. Um, and they have like dwarven. Um, inscriptions and ruins over their some of their clothing and so forth and the insignia. He has an insignia ring with like a dwarven inscription. Um, there's obvious, I put some more information on the world anvil in regards to that. And the reason being is that the Iron Links believe anything can be bought or sold or anything can be chained. There you go, man. Accident can make a uh, insight roll if he wants to know, or history roll if he wants to know more about the Iron Links. We'll say the DC mm -hmm. is like 13 or something. As Exxon has probably dealt with them. Go with the history. And that's, that's a good. natural one. Yep. Just a little forgetful today. You're thinking about the beer, I guess, inside. Yep. Stunning as ever, my lady. Let me, I uh, also wanted to show the picture. So I've described, he wears like these little slippers too. He's probably like, I imagine he's probably like five foot six. So he's kind of a shorter individual. You know, he's not like, and he's got like a pot belly. You know, he's got like a dad bod thing going on. But he's obviously just, you know, he's got gold rings and adornments on him. You know, he doesn't need to be handsome. <laughs> he's got money. <laughs> right? He pulls up in the coach. He's like, stunning, milady. I, uh, well, I, thank you. You must forgive me. My memory is too um, short, as they say. <laughs> too much hashish. Um, where did you say, what land do you hail from, my lady? I am a famous courtesan from the southern continent and the house of Ramash of Hasbal. 
A courtesan, you say? Um, what is your price? For the <laughs> evening? More than you could pay. Hmm. How does a courtesan acquire such valuable gold and items? Only kings and wealthy lords. And are... who, who is your madame? So I may speak with her. I I run my own business, sir. Oh, apologies. Mm, we definitely need to speak about this later. He's like Absolutely. grasping you by the hand in a way. I'll take his hand and you know he's. Go. It's not like a pseudo date, you know, like a f yeah. first date kind of casual affair. He says, "Shall we?" Is he like kind of gestures to the main door? I'll walk in with him. So this can be like theater oh, of the mind. I did put, I so I have the battle board out just in case something does happen, you know. <laughs> but it also gives yeah. you like a feeling tone of like what's going on. Let's pull up the music again. This was supposed to be the wedding music. <laughs> Start it over because <laughs> I want to. It's all like <laughs> live. Oh no, yeah. So there's like lively, like medieval, like wedding music going on and playing. Let me see. And let's like move our characters in, I guess. So I use my arrow keys because this map is a little like as we go up the stairs, it's a little buggy. So like you walk in and there's like these two mysterious like guards or whatever. They're like. They're dressed in robes, Exodin, but they're not in like, um, they're not like the robed people that you saw before, right? But they're like, there says invitation and the Rashad like hands on the invitation. Okay, this is my plus one. And um, who are these other feet people that are here? They are my servants. Oh. And Looks, entourage. Exodin is wearing his helmet so they can't see the slave marking they look at azul you know and that's good enough for them they're just like oh, strange and they just allow you to go through this way my lady and there's like you know like you see like nobles and like people going up i'm gonna take a left here uh as that's where rashad is going as i try to move around this thing here and i'll move up to here do you guys want me to move your models up to here <clears throat> Just to kind of help you out. It's a little laggy. I think the last update in Tailspire kind of bugged out a little bit. So, um, you see, let me describe what you guys see here. Oh, something's going on. My little music stopped. Here we go. No expense has been spared in the decorating of the wedding chamber. Delicately tied ribbons adorn the gilded chairs along the aisle sprinkled with colorful petals. Matching flowers are pinned to banners hanging from the ceiling. The poised guests, guided to their seats by ushers, sit slowly and carefully so not to crease the fine silks of lace on their outfits. A trio of musicians fills the room with calming melody, though you catch the sight of the groom at the front of the chamber, standing with a rigid anticipation. The song wades, wades, and guests are just scurrying about. It feels as though the ceremony is about to begin. I point out Ian Parnish for you guys. He's over here. He seems to be surrounded by some nobles, and you guys see it, uh, accident. Istra's there. She's obviously, like, dressed in, like, fine, you know, fine outfit. In Corridor, you see it too. It's pretty weird. She looks to be alive. You guys just did. You guys did see the portal close, and you did do the investigation after the portal closed and saw the blood trail and so forth. But she seems to be alive in there. What we also guys? saw the uh, stumbling, walking pattern that she had. Yeah, the footmarks didn't really match her, like her feminine walking. Yeah. It seemed like more like different when you did the investigation roll. Um, Rashad says, I, Do you mind I will go get us a drink, my lady? That would be lovely. Mm. What do you drink? Wine will be fine. Mm. Slave, come here. He points to his uh, I walk over. Uh, let's just go grab the lady some refreshments. Don't be so rude. Of course. 
So you guys go off and get some refreshments. What do you guys do? Uh, we're all at the table. We're, yeah. Are we all together at a table? So I just put you out. Are we do we can just do a seal of the mind if we need to use the battle board. We will. But the uh, the tailspire model is here in case you guys want to throw down. Basically, right? Yeah. Um, and also just to help you with the immersion, right? I want to uh, observe, like, I mean, I'm guessing there's probably a high level of protection, but is there anybody that stands out that seems very powerful? I put out like a few guards. There's like right. a there's like a few guards, like two or three guards. Ian like laughs. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I oh, wasn't doing man. his voice that well before. Remember that was his voice. I do. I love that voice. Oh yes. Excellent. He's like talking with some people, some nobles. Rashad comes back with Azul and says, That is uh, one of the other merchants over there. They say she rules the Gilded Bank. You see her like stand up. And she like goes over and talks with one of them. The Gilded Bank, milady, is how we keep all the money. <laughs> we have to keep all of our profits from our trade. How much profits do you make from this trade of yours? Mm, very much. As he like kind of like just strokes his beard and you see all the gold rings that he has. Ah, huh. I like a man that can run a business. Slave, go see if we can smoke our hashish here. Yes. Uh, well, I guess I would walk over to the nearest guard and ask if... Uh... The guard like looks at you like he's like kind of looks strange. Make a perception check. Oh, I bet I already know what's up with these guys. <laughs> Same as before. <laughs> they got those brain things in them. <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, perception. You guys see Istra laugh along with Ian. As in that one. Natural one. <laughs> Now, even though you roll a natural one, like it's not in the book, rules is written, it's not a straight up failure. But the guard looks a little weird, and you're trying to do it, you get distracted like a guy bumps into you. Watch where you're going, slave. Oh, sorry. Oh. Where's your master at? Over there. Hmm. Maybe you should find your way back. The noble like walks off. Cordar, what are you doing? I guess I would just be traveling around, especially that this uh, noble, this uh, guy doesn't like Moretti, has seen me before, but these new, new clothing might might help. The, the, I'm just trying to go around. Have you met him. Ian before? I don't think you have. Not, no, not Ian. You not. You were on vacation when the fight happened. Yes. Yeah, Corridor's never encountered Ian at all. No, mm -hmm. it's my first time seeing it. But I would want to see if there are any other higher nobles around. Yeah, there's some other nobles. Do you want to talk to one of them? No, I'll just try my best to blend in. I won't approach for now. You want to make a stealth roll? Yeah. Try to, like, blend in the crowd in a way? Mm-hmm. Natural one. He's, like, stumble into something. And it's like somehow, some way, it's like um, you fucking bump into the king. Oh, right? Oof. You said no, it's the king. Sorry, you like spill like a drink or something on him. He's like, huh. oh, what is this? I, I kind of kneel and um, my apologies. My you king. get down on one knee and kneel to the king? Yeah. Mm, I'll rise. He like holds out his hand to like for you to kiss the ring. I'll kiss his hand. You kiss the ring? ring. Yeah. He says, oh, what is your name? Oh, dear, sir. My mo most apologies. He begins to cast, like, magic, you know? He never leaves without a staff. Uh, mm -hmm. Lord Ian Parnish. I'll describe uh, what the King Parnish looks like. He wears, like, it's kind of strange, accident. He does wear, he's, like, wearing a different attire, but he never leaves with any, where, anywhere without his staff. It's like a staff and him is like one and the same. It's a blue staff. Actually, I have his model here, which I have put the staff out. 
and he's right here with this blue staff. <laughs> it has a gem on the top. It has like smoke that comes out of it. And you see him like Cordari as you like apologize to him. He starts to cast magic and like like all the spill that you hit with the glass. He says, Slay, get him another drink. As you're dressed in fine clothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was most impressive, my king. Oh, I guess. By four of many more tricks, unbeknownst to the realm. What uh, house are you from, and where exactly are you from? Oh, uh, I am from uh, Stormbrook, but I'm with uh, Lady Evie with the knight. Mm. She uh, allowed me to come be here. See, the king was like making gestures in his hands, like he's casting magic. What do you do? Mm. But uh, if you do not mind. My king, uh, I wish to go back to her. Mm, yes. Well, stay around for the festivities, will you? Of course. That's mm. why I came in the first place. I he goes back to again. Honey, will you please come here? Uh, you guys hear Istra call. Yes, my queen. And he walks over to Istra. What do you guys do? You guys are all at the table. Rashad is there. Rashad is already getting like kind of shit face wasted. He's like, you work as hard as I do all day. <laughs> he takes another Would drink. Would you introduce me to the king? Right now? Well, if you get any more drunk, it may not be. Uh, yes, I... A good introduction. Are you drinking tonight? You know, he tries to, like, insist the beer in your face, you know, to get you loosened up. He's trying to pull that maneuver. <laughs> Pretend to be drinking. You just take like a little sip or something. You're like nursing it a little bit. He doesn't notice at this point, you know. He's like, oh, yes, my lady. He like stands up. He's like kind of hefty, you know. He like kind of like has to like rock out of his chair a little bit. You hear the cracking of it. He's like, he's like, could you have your slave stand back though? He's kind of stinks. But you, no, on the other hand, smell magnificent. Hand Thank you. Thank you, my lord. You guys walk up to Ian Parnish. Oh, who is this fine lady? As you approach we'll the king. down to me. Your Just majesty. Arrive. Uh, I keep my head down. My name is Evie. You try to do like yeah, a stealth roll to disguise yourself, Azul? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm <laughs> keep my head down. Because <laughs> you did try to take some pot shots at the king a while back. So uh, I tried. Oh, oh, nice. Let me make a counter roll. Please, honestly. Please, honestly. <laughs> I'm just a servant. You don't even look. You don't even look at servants. Come on. Are you kidding? That's true. But he's yeah. very observant. Not too observant. Come on. He does have it. He does proficient. He doesn't seem oh. to notice you. For Thank now. <laughs> yes. Um, arise, my lady. What do you say to him? <clears throat> I have an inquiry and perhaps a gift and trade for your to mark this special occasion of your wedding. A wedding gift. Well, it isn't exactly a gift as I would need something in return, but mm, I don't great. think it would be exactly. Well, what wedding gift did you bring to my my wedding, of course? Did you know I'm supposed to be married to Queen Istra here. <laughs> He's a beautiful maid. I assume that you should be very happy and have many years of prosperity. Uh, make a perception roll as you like eye over Istra. <laughs> oh, I rolled the wrong thing, shit. That's okay. We'll keep the roll, whatever it is, and then add your perception. What'd you roll for perception? Uh, so I have 14. 14. Is what it would be. Istra is like, she looks like she's there, but her eyes are like glossed over a little bit. She's obviously been like dolled up, you know, for the wedding. And, you know, it's some attempt, like she is wearing a nice wedding dress. Be a way to expose she says, well, well, what, what wedding whiff did you bring me and my beautiful wife? And I will pull out the smoky orcish goblet. You're going to pull out the goblet? 
that that uh, Arno gave you. Yes. The twenty three thousand gold goblet. This is this is the item I have proposed to trade, Your Highness. Only oh. someone as fine as you, I could imagine, would be able to afford such an item. Oh my goodness! Bring it here. He like oh, takes his hands out, you know, to touch it. And um, do you hand it to him? Um, not yet. Okay. You're kind of more reserved about it. You don't want to hand it to him, okay? Yes. He's All like, in good time. He says, "Do you, you refuse the king's wishes?" We must make a deal. Huh. Fair is fair. Huh. What deal is this? Well, my date, Mr. Rashad, informed me that you have acquired a bag of holding. Around the king's neck, you see it. The two fingers, right? About eight inches in length. They're around wow. his neck as a necklace, right? That he has. You see interconnected between the joints of the fingers, the bone fingers, is like dark necrotic energy. He wears them proudly around his neck. Those are some very interesting trinkets you have there, hmm. your highness. I'm searching for magical items everywhere in the lands. Much like Rizu. Have you heard him and his soldiers have conquered Summerkand? I had. And I heard this Rizu has done terrible things. I'm hoping that... It is very powerful. Yes. How powerful can a genie really be, though? I'm sure not as powerful as you, my lord. Every genie has a master, from what I understand. Isn't that true, milady? I'm sure the king must know all truths. Anyways, back to this goblet. Where did you get this? Well, one of the kings of the southern continents was very fond of my affection and gifted it to me. Hmm. Is that so? I don't think he fully knew its true value. Hmm. But I knew someone like you would. Make a deception roll. You might be able to beat him because you are good at it, but I rolled a 25. I rolled a 25. So, <laughs> so if you tie with the DM, you beat the DM. That's how it does. Huh. You feel like he tries to touch his head for a minute, but then he's like, you know, to try to do something, you know, but he's like, huh. Hmm. Interesting. What king, what was the name of the king? King of the land of Summer Eve. His name was Sir Patrick of Wellington. He looks behind you and he sees his wolves just like heads down, you know, keeping it to himself. Cordar is doing good. What is Cordar doing right now? Just going around, sitting at the bar, taking a drink, maybe chatting. Who do you want to chat with? Uh, just anybody who's probably sitting at the bar. It's one of the other uh, merchants. Let me take a look. She says, my name is Valexia. Yeah, she oh. has like a bodyguard too. Right. Valexia. So you also work at the Merchant's Guild? Hmm, that is correct. Hmm. Well, I was interested in... Uh, Where do you work? Trying... Oh. I just work around Stormbrook. I work for a variety of things, but I mainly work on these and I'll show her the variety of my potions. And that's was the question I was trying to lead up to you. I was wondering if you have any, uh, a, a vast amounts of any uh, herbs that I was looking for, unique ones, ones that are hard to get. Of course. Well, maybe we can strike a deal with the list of things that I need. You have to just come by the Gilded Bank, of course. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I'll stop by after this lovely wedding. Well, stop by tomorrow. It'll be too late. Well, maybe later on tonight when this is over. You want to come by tonight? Very well. My mom always told me that nothing good happens after 3 p.m. or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to come by tonight? And it, and, they, and you see that guy like come up and like nudge her, and he's like, "All right, come by." The bodyguard, you know, like nudges her. Yeah. Yes, but I would love to come over tonight. I have most things I would love to uh, experiment with, but probably somebody like you has the things I need. Yeah, we do. She gives you directions. Alrighty. She's like, uh, "Okay, whatever," and she like leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'll just continue seeing at the bar. And She's like a little music. distracted, and so she like just gets up and like leaves a little bit. The other bar, as they're leaving off, the guy like starts singing a little bit. It's kind of weird. He's like singing a little <laughs> song to himself, like just about like you know nobles coming to the 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 gilded hall and finding their way. Cool. Yep. Let's Still go back blooded. to let's go to let's go back to Evie. What is Exodent doing? Is Exodent just kind of like? Standing by, kind of close by, but not like doing anything, or yeah, I'm kind of standing at attention, uh, like as a bodyguard and... almost. Yeah, okay, okay. What do you want to say? How many that? kings you have the goblet, so this beautiful goblet in your hand, still you're trying to barter with the king with. You've told her that you've told him that it's from the king of summer count. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to make a roll with him to see if he like has information about the king. Oh, my little YouTube videos have an issues. Hmm, all right. Have you heard any word about his whereabouts? Heard many things. As a courtesan, I find information all over. That blasted fucking genie king. Ah, what should we do about him? Well, I'm sure if you go after him, you could definitely take him with all of your might. Mm. It's not you as... have two magic artifacts. It's not as easy as you think. You need armies to defeat something like this. Defeat a genie, you have to have men that fear nothing. He looks over at accident. I see you've picked up a deserter. Take anyone into my service who can fight. Mm, probably got them cheap. Good for you. Well, I would need the bag of holding, and I would say at least 25,000 gold. Who told you I had the bag of holding? My date. He looks over at Rashad, he like burps and he like kind of like does a little wit, like a little thing over to you guys' table. <laughs> <laughs> he like eats a drumstick and he's like just nods or whatever. Uh, that was me. <laughs> Azul looks at him a little bit more like perturbed. He's just like this. He's like just getting shit out of his teeth. 25,000 gold. My, my, my. Who do you think I am, the king? <laughs> Who carries that kind of gold around? Yeah, and you see, like, Istra, like, fawn over him and, like, giggle on him a little bit as he makes some, like, just half ass joke. <laughs> well. Oh, your majesty's so funny. Oh. Well, I do have a problem lately. Maybe you could help me with it. Ah, I'd love to be of service to the king. Hmm. Are you, would you say you're a woman of many skills? You can find these cell swords. I'm sure you can find other riffraff. Well, my plate I'm is a little baby. full, as you can tell. <laughs> Becoming king and all. I would imagine. Your attention is called in many places. Apparently, the Vastani traitors are trying to reestablish trade routes with the northern kingdoms. And if we plan on beating the genie king Riju, well, we have to establish these trade routes. 
You know, armies need gold and all that. This gold of which you speak of, haha, <laughs> and desire. Slave, go fetch the bag. What bag is that, my lord? The bag! He, like, yells, and the slave runs off. <laughs> <laughs> he says, apparently there's some beast up there that is causing problems with the trade routes. And I did tell a group before this, before I disposed of them, of course. <laughs> there was a dragon problem we're having. The sailors complain that the old dragon of the seas that once guarded these fabled lands is now sinking our ships on the way to Vagrax. How are we supposed to have a vibrant slave trade if we can't have our ships be safe? Hmm. What would you do about this? Milady. Um, sounds like you need a dragon slayer. Mm, he looks over at Exodin. What say you, knight? I look at him and I just uh, nod. I don't, I don't want to say anything if I can avoid it. Mm. Silence and stark, the way I like. He looks over at Istra. Istra gives him a little mm -hmm. peck on the cheek. Is it possible to uh, intercept the bag coming over here? The, the bag the is hand. the bag is being rushed over by the slave. You're going to try to like kind of stealthily make your way out to try to intercept the slave carrying the bag. Yeah. Make a stealth roll okay. against Ian's uh, perception. Not the slaves. Well, he's like noticing you leave this court. They're like holding court essentially. Oh, now between no, I want I want to uh, like. Uh, whisper in my uh, master's ears uh, before I, you know, I, sure. that way I, I, I have permission to go, you know, and it doesn't seem suspicious. Sure. Oh, uh, I whisper, uh, I think I could possibly intercept the bag before we get here. Keep no violence. Too powerful. Let's make this deal if we can. I. If Evie is kind of disagreeing with Azul about this plan. Yes. <laughs> okay. It says, <clears throat> what, so Evie like whispers something back. What does Azul do? do uh... Ian seems, seems like kind of distracted. His slave is interrupting the conversation. Is this urgent? Sorry, my lord. And another like, you know, um, like slave comes up to Ian and says, like whispers something in his ear and says, well, the ceremony is about to begin. Shall we all take our seats? We can continue this uh, discussion later, my lady, if you wish. I would, your highness. Mm. Maybe we should also discuss your price as well. You said you were a courtesan. Uh, you are no, a king. No problem, uh, right, Istra? Istra, like, nods. Kind of strangely. <laughs> I will, uh... It's like, must be some strange, like, polyamorous relationship going on here. <laughs> I gra gracefully take my feet <laughs> and put the cup back into my bag. Hmm. I do want to see that cup later. See me later. You guys return to your seats. I put out the father. I think I got his name here, too. He's just, like, drunken dude. His name is Father Thomas. I'm assuming like Cordar's like bumped him to at least one tonight. He's like, you gonna drink any of that? <laughs> no, finish it off if you want to. You know who the greatest god of them all is? <laughs> who is that? Yagi. Hmm. Well, what god gonna... do you believe in? Uh oh. I don't know what to believe in nowadays. Yagi, yeah, like this, the father, like drinks some of his mug. It's got like a bunch of the foam on it, and it, like gets just all up in his beard. He like just doesn't give a shit. He's not like a fat guy at all, though. But he's just kind of skinny, you know. But he's just kind of like ragtag put together, just there to have a good time. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you can't live it all if you don't try a little. Just a taste. Why not? You want some of mine? Nah, I can get my own. I don't you enjoy wash. the rest of it. No, okay. you enjoy the rest. Are you gonna stay around for the dance? 
Yeah. Great. You go and get yourself a beer, and he's like, he's like, so what God do you believe in? I just said, I don't really know which one to choose. It's hard to tell nowadays. Yeah. Maybe you should start believing in the God of dance and partying like me. <laughs> I'll give it a try out tonight. They say the God Yagi walks amongst us mortals. And Comey's made love to some mortal woman. And to spring out such a God of greatness and drunkenness and dance and partying. Well, that's just the greatest blessing the gods can give, right? That is a quite fascinating story indeed. Do you, do you smoke at all? <laughs> no, no. Do you want to? I, no, I, I have no pretense of doing that tonight. Uh, are you sure? Uh, very. He's like, if you sit down in that chair any tighter, you're going to break it. Mm -hmm. Then I'll take my chances. Just got to loosen up a little bit, partner. Well, I think I'm taking my time for tonight, but maybe that person over there, I'll just point to a random person sitting alone. Maybe they would probably want to loosen up tonight. Father, you want it for the ceremony. Oh, oh yeah, right. Okay, well, take this instead. He like slides like a joint across the table. You know, actually he's like, that one's on me. And he like takes one <laughs> final like chug. He's like, one sec. And he like fucking chugs this mug and he like slams it down. Just like there's just a little bitty foam particles pop out. That some of the bards like slow down the music. They go and like start the ceremony. And it says, and here we are to like wed these two famous people. <laughs> and may the god Yagi bless their marriage. And he like, he's like the king. And he like tries to put the hand on the king. He's like, he's like, don't touch me. And king's like, hurry it up. The king says, you know. And he's like, oh, yeah, right. And, uh, and let it be known that they're married now. And he's like, everybody drinks on me! And he like goes back to the bar and tries to like, you know, order up some drinks. Everybody like cheers. Yeah! And he's like, thank God. The king like mutters under his breath and like sits back down. And he like, he's, he like, just, he like, a slave comes over to, uh, he like gestures to a slave. A slave comes, like taps his Evie on the shoulder. As the dancing and parting is going on, people are like dancing one other. Um, Istra, like, doesn't even do the ceremonial. Istra's kind of acting weird. You know, she doesn't even do, like, the girdle thing or whatever, where she, like, snaps it off to the crowd. So maybe Azul catches it. You know? <laughs> no. Kordar, what do you do? I'll join the dancing. Yeah, so, like, some dancing going on. Are you trying to find someone special? Uh, no, I'll probably just dance around. I was like, they're doing that little, like, pass off. Yeah, they're doing, like, the little hands are clasping together, you know? I think about that yeah. scene in The Witcher, you know? Mm -hmm. With the stone and stuff, like, they're all dancing together. Yeah, uh, but no, just, just trying to, to enjoy this strange scenario that I'm in at the most. Everybody's wearing, like, you know, the little wreaths with the flowers and so on. They're all pretty well dressed. They say if you stop dancing with a woman, you gotta be with her for the night. Do you want to take your chances? <laughs> <laughs> no. No? You kind of like step out and one Cody of the women... does not care for such things. And one of the women's like, as you're leaving, she's like, oh, come back. And like a few of the women like gaggle amongst themselves as the, as the alcohol is going throughout the air and as the night goes longer, it's getting drunk. The king is speaking with other people and like holding court kind of like casually. Istra, you know, kind of excuses herself and she like leaves the room. What do you guys do? I'll head out for the night to meet with that merchant. <laughs> you want to go to the gilded built gilded bank by yourself, or do you want to wait for everyone? Oh, I'll, I'll uh, go by myself. Okay, I like that. We will. So we're splitting the group up, correct? Unless somebody wants to say something before I go, but if not, I'm heading out. Is Cordar going taking anyone with him? I'll give them like official like hey I'm leaving like I'm pointing towards the doorway okay All right. uh, I'm gonna just be sticking with Evie nice okay cool yeah, I don't know if I should confront these strong 
see what's going on over Evie, there. so uh, since sounds like Azul and Exodent and then Kordar is just kind of yellowing himself. I like that. Okay. So Kordar tells you what he's doing. He's taking off and we'll do a little scene with him later. The bank is probably about 15 minutes away. One of the slaves comes up to Evie and says, the king will see you now. Milady. We'll go with the servant and Azul, obviously, and Exodent hopefully will come. Exodent, all the king's slaves, they like range in age types from like young boys to girls, also young men. They all have the marking of the king's slave, though. A practice held over by the last war from the orcs, right? It has not been abolished. But it's only been carried out by the merchant guild, which is still in place, or by the iron links. You approach the king gun. Ah, oh, yes, my favorite guest. Um, do you have the item? I do. Hmm, I'll show you yours if you show me mine. <laughs> he like race below the table. He like pulls up the bag. He's like, is this what no. you seek? Yeah, go ahead. Hmm. Go ahead and yours now. I will slide it across the table. You slide the goblet across the table? Hmm. 25,000 gold. Hmm. A king's fortune. Enough to raise an army. Hmm. How can we come to terms, milady? Well, maybe if we also could take care of this dragon problem? Hmm. I say the dragon is of the seas. So fucking hard, these dragons are always going throughout the layers. They say the dragon used to run the Gilded Bank. But it had left long ago. The Does merchants have, have taken name? it over. Come closer, milady, and I wish to whisper something to you. What? He's like kind of like muttering his mouth, but he like speaks into your mind. He's like, not all is what it seems. I don't trust the merchants fully myself. But it's like in a different voice. You know, it's not like the king's voice. As he's like speaking you through telepathy. What do you suspect? Mm. Merchants just care about gold. He's like speaking accident and the like other words are coming out while he's just speaking with Evie through the mind. What do you care about? You see the thing the fingers dangle in front of his neck. You have to make a charisma saving throw as the calling of the fingers reaches out to you. And you hear like a whisper of the wind being carried almost like a thousand miles away through the overhearing the wedding noise. A strange wind blows throughout the chamber. You resist it. You hear like the ancient call, some forgotten elvish language. Ish, la casa. Evie, it's something your master's told you about, maybe, that this is the real threat that you've been sent through the portal for. It's all kind of coming together, isn't it? Your master told you about a great threat. Maybe you resisted it for now. Well, this dragon, he could take care of for you. Mm, yeah. And maybe help you with the problem with the guild. Well, here you go then. He like pulls it. Bring me my parchment, slave. A slave comes over and like brings him this parchment. He like signs something off. He says, how much for the fee for the dragon problem? Ten thousand gold. Hmm. Five thousand. Fine. That's a steal. You'll be paid after you bring me the dragon's head, of course. That sounds like not a problem. Excellent. And he like signs the paper and he like takes his king's ring. He's like, and the slave like next to him like pours the wax. You know, it's like one of the, the like lead slaves or whatever, right? Like I was reading about, you know, like Caesar always had like these well educated slaves around to like help them out. You know, that were really well read. He stamps his signet on as the king's slave helps him out and like scrolls it up. 
It's basically a banknote. Like, the king's just not going to carry around 20,000 gold. It's kept in the bank. And you have to cash it in at the bank. And he says, he's like, this would make a fine addition. And he, like, he's like takes the goblet from you. And he hands you the bag of holding. You can add it to the sheet. You've Glad somehow can make a deal, your highness. You've negotiated with the king. And he's like, before you go, you mind? He reaches up and ties a touch his head. I just want to make sure you're going to get this dragon problem out of the way for me. Of course. Do you mind? You let me in a little bit. Sure. I'm sure you've had a few rude customers in the past. They can be a little forceful. Try not to resist. He begins to like, you see him like, he's like, he closes his eyes a little bit. It's just like a haze for him, you know, as he starts to like his head bobble. You see the air around him begin to flicker a little bit. Something exiting is strange, you know, as you see it, like the reverberation off his clothing and stuff like that. The guards and guests seem to be like too drunk to notice, but like, you notice accident like as remember Adeline was in the force bubble before when you were fighting him and he was she was he was getting close like the same ripple the illusion must be distorting a little bit around the king right and he oh, casts uh, detect thoughts around on Evie do you resist it concentration oh, yeah, I, I think I have advantage or I have advantage against being charmed yeah, I don't know. I think so. Do you want to resist it, or how are you doing it? Um. That's what he's reading resist, right now. He's he's trying to resist. He's like reading your surface thoughts right now, and then he's like trying to see basically peer in if you're going to handle the dragon problem. I think I'm going to handle the dragon problem. So I'll let you're it, telling the truth. I'll, I'll let him go ahead. Yeah. He's like, it's like excellent. He's like, there's more there, isn't there? That all cost money. Mm. There's Maybe a short supply these brain? days. He gets up with his staff and he's like, kind of grudgingly, like, leaves. The king leaves. What do you guys do? Unless you're going to say anything to him as he's leaving. Thank you, your highness. And he will be back with the dragon's head. He who wears a crown has a heavy burden. You've cost me a small fortune, my lady. Do not make sure I waste it. And he holds the goblet in his hand. Mm, excellent. And he walks off. What do you guys do? I whisper into uh, uh, her ear. That was a good fly. I don't know how you managed to cover your thoughts when he believed it. Get the hell out of here. Uh, I would nod GV, lean in and say, can we please leave now? We've accomplished our mission. Let's go find Corda if we can. And I'm uh, going to give Exodin the bank note. Just because he's the, like, biggest and most scary. <laughs> <laughs> and it won't get stolen from, from, from him. <laughs> the father, like, stumbles his way up to Evie. He's like, you drank enough tonight? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah! We're all just so wasted. You're, 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 you're alone, though. Well, my guards are just taking me home because I've just had too much fun tonight. Oh, I get that feeling every night. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening, Father. Yeah, you do. <laughs> He's like, you want one for the road? He like turns around as you try to leave. He like holds up a joint. I wouldn't say no to uh, free 
Party favors, thank you. Praise be to Yagi! He, like, hands you a, 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 a <laughs> joint. I'll hold on to that for later. Smoke it quick. <laughs> he, like, he turns around and he's like, Hey, Pete! And he, like, fucking, like, handshakes a guy or something. Where the fuck you been at? <laughs> what do you guys do? I'm mad to the... Yes, let's go to Kordar. It's been about 15 yes. minutes. Kordar, I'll load up the map. Oh, he gets assassinated. God damn it. <laughs> it's probably like um, six, I want to say probably like seven thirty. So it's dark now because it's winter time. My poor little thing is not working. Let me fix this. Got a little glitch. A little technical issues. I want to say it's seven thirty at night. Let's load it up. I kind of like this music. What do you guys? You guys like the music? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's still like kind of noisy. I mean, this is a big. Um, this is a big uh, uh, city. So there's still like it's kind of like. I don't want to say it's like New York City, but it's like that. Like it's a city that almost doesn't sleep. There's way too many people and not enough housing. You know, Cordar, there's like lots of bums and things like on the street. Um, so like Chicago, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just a lot of people, just like riff raffs around. Let me see what I got. And you are dressed in your fine clothing. I am. Um. Why don't you roll a d20 for me, and um, if you roll a 14 or higher, something happens. Oof. Only time I roll high? Nope. Yeah. No. You make your way to the um, the bank with no problem. I'll put out your model. Get you. Here we go, Kordar. Kordar the Fuller Ball, who is dressed in fine clothing. Um, let me summon you to the board. That's what I was say. So you have 15 minutes before the rest of the group kind of catches up. What do you do? You see the bank. It stands there. It's like a mighty bank. The door mm -hmm. is open. Um, pillars are everywhere. It must be like four or five stories tall. Um, I'll, uh, it proceed seems to unusual the... for the size and scope of the bank, especially after the last war. Like, you know, it seems a little off. But the merchants are rich. What do you do? Uh, I will t proceed to uh, walk in. And there's a, there's a front desk. I would proceed to ask for the one that I've met at the castle. You move up. I'm going to just put your character in here as you jump onto the thing. <laughs> so I'm going to move you over. Where do I have the entrance way? There's a few entrance ways in here. You walk in and there is a guard. Yep. You go up to this guy, um, and there's like there's a guard over here, you know, um, outside too. I have a a guard posted outside, which I thought you were going in that way. Um, so you walk past the guard. The guard doesn't really question you, and you go up to like the um, the counter where uh, a, an older man is at, and he's like down there scribing. He's like, hmm. "Yes, you have a note." Oh, um. Uh... Yes, I was uh, trying to look for this uh, person. I met them uh, early on uh, at the king's wedding, and we were uh, probably proposing a deal. Mm, yes, my lord. I was, was uh, requesting uh, if I could uh, see them. Mm. Um, who would that be? I'm trying to remember. What was their name again? Vaxila? Vaxila? What was it? Vaxila? Vaxila. Yeah, Vaxila. Yeah. Oh, mm, excellent. <laughs> right upstairs. Make an insert roll. I also have advantage on telling the truth. Yeah, make an insight roll. 19. Something's wrong. You got like a bad feeling. Hmm. Well, uh, oh, m my goodness. 
I have oh, right this way. Back. No, no, no. I, I have. I forgot something back at home, but don't worry. Uh, you can tell her just to wait there. Mm, what do you be forget? There. Should we get the oh, slave to go get it for you? Oh, no, don't worry about it. I'll be back real soon. Now I'll just walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> noping out of there. She like her like she looks um the he, I have it as a woman and she like looks at you like kind of strange as like you just came in now like you're like like checking your pockets or whatever and you're like forgot something you know you're like man I forgot my my keys or something yeah <laughs> and as soon as I walk out the door and it closes I'll use hidden step okay what does that do uh, it turns me invisible okay you go invisible is this like a new strict haven spell or something. Uh, hidden step is my bonus action for uh, fair bulk. Oh, yeah, you turn invisible. What is the rest of the group doing? I'm assuming you guys have left the wedding. Yeah, uh, exit in. You know, obviously, Istra was weird. You've never seen Istra yeah. act like that. Something's totally wrong. I mean, it looked like Istra, and I head back then. Okay. What do you guys do? I mean, are we still at the wedding or are we leaving the wedding? We left. Okay, we're in the coach left. and we've left. Left. Where are we going? Uh, we're going back to the inn, I'm assuming. Uh, I would want to go meet up with Corridor. Um, I'm assuming Corridor would have told us where he was going, or maybe not. Would yes, he did. He he told you guys oh, yeah, where he's yeah. going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we were going to this place then to oh. meet up with him. Nope. Oh, we hit that boy last for six seconds, but it's just for if they try to pip, pop out and try to look for me. In uh in the carriage I'm gonna ask, I guess, both Azul and Exident. And you say Istra was your friend, but she didn't know you. Well she uh I wouldn't say that was really Istra we saw there. I don't know what that was. Certainly there is body. more to this King Ian. I I think he may have maybe the one that I that my great masters had warned me about. He's not one to be taken lightly. Yes, he's a powerful spellcaster. We got our twenty thousand and our bag of holding. I would say we made off quite well in that regard. I would congratulate you, Evie, on that. I told you I could be a useful ally. Unfortunately, I was not able to acquire anything for you from the store. I'm sure we'll find something along the way, especially now that we have this bank note from the king. Um, you guys are heading back to the inn? No, we were going to the bank. Yeah. We're going to the yeah. bank? You guys see Corridor like coming down the street. Yeah. And, the, and you guys are in the open car and it says, Watch it there, my lord! As like, the guy snaps his hands, you guys notice Corridor like, it's pretty hard not to spot Corridor. He's a giant furball walking in mostly a city of like, there's a lot of mixed races. But there's pretty much, I would say, zero fur bogs in this area. Oh. As in medieval times, like the integration is not like super high, but there is like a lot of there are hell elves, half elves, half orcs, halflings, and things like that. But fur bogs, no. I'll wave them down, even though they probably see me. <laughs> <laughs> Corridor, what happened? Aren't you going oh. to the bank? I was. I was hoping possibly obtain a deal for some unique herbs for myself. But something was off. I couldn't trust it. It's maybe if you guys are around, I could try again. But something uh, wasn't right. Yes, I'm pretty sure your uh, business skills are what led you to run away. Um, let's mm -hmm. see if we can help our friend get his herbs. And we'll I don't this think old. my business deal this time was negligent. I think something is up. Probably some scheme to pick in my pockets, per chance. It is a bank, after all. 
have this very large banknote. We were successful in getting the items, and the, this is where we'll need to get the money. Should we wait till the morning? Oh. Or try again now? I mean, they're there, but I don't have to walk in. I what time is it? See why not? It's like seven thirty, sir. Oh. Well, they are waiting for me now. Currently, to try to make a deal, but like I said. I don't, I have a bad feeling about it, so I'm just going to leave them hanging. But I can try to investigate, but I'm unsure. I don't exactly trust your gut. Maybe so you I, can join me? I in, in agreement to just join this now. Oh. We'll go into the bank. I'll wait outside for you, for you guys. My lady, I hate to speak up, but I believe the bank, bank closes in about 20 minutes. Then maybe we should wait until the morning. Well, if it's King's business, then. Oh, it's maybe. King's business? Then they'll probably continue even after the night. If that, is, be. that is true, my lord. Are, are you getting on the coach? Oh yes, I'll I'll hop in. Even though it's like a tight fit. <laughs> yeah, you kind of sit down. The like the spoke of the wagon like sits down. I guess there's shocks or something in these wagons. Kind of like I'm leaning sure. over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Kind of awkward. Not really built for your giant rear. We can wait for tomorrow. Yes, but I don't think it would change if we do it tonight either. If anything, it'll give us the option to do something tomorrow morning instead of wasting our time. All right. Well, I guess let's go in and see if we can cash this note. To the bank. You guys are off to the Gilded Bank. The cart pulls up. I'll put out the models. Put them out. So, taller building than I thought. Yeah. Zool. Jesus, this is basically a, a fortress uh, and i'll say the coach i don't have the coach out obviously yeah just do it in mind um, <laughs> let me see what we got, we got evie here Bank. and then we need exit in right here i when i imagined this bank it was like one maybe two stories tall i've also made it a little bit darker so on players the board there you guys go you're outside the bank Sally? Sure. Best of luck. Go on with Evie. The entire outside of this building is from great steps to the front entrance, the massive columns surrounding it. It's kind of covered in shiny gold. A carved inscription above the massive double doors reads, <laughs> Welcome to the Gilded Vault! What do you guys do? We're just walking in, okay. The, the door is like open. Um, um, I forgot I got the note. Uh, <clears throat> walk up. I'm here to cash this note. Okay, let me move your models up. Yeah, and you, just, that... you just caught us in the nick of time. We're about to close, she says. Oh, you're back. Is Kordar going in? No, uh, I am transforming into a little bird and flying in. You need your wild shape? Yep. Okay. Uh, I mean, somehow Evie has gotten stuck somewhere. I can't get her model. I don't know. <laughs> but I'll be Evie! <laughs> Where'd you go, Evie? You're stuck. I can't move you either. I'm going to have to... How I do this when models get stuck like this is I got to pull them out manually. Like this. Sorry. Oop. No, you're good. Oh, and you're invisible yeah. now. Boom, there you go. So I put oh, you guys yeah. in front of the desk. Let me see if I have um, some descriptions here. Two rows of huge columns hold up the ceiling of this arched hall, leading into the long marble counter. The stairs go, you guys can see there's like stairs that go up way, but the lanterns are bright. There's this huge stairway that goes up. He says, oh, you have a, a, a note from the king, no less. He says, hmm, 20,000 gold. My, well... 
right this way. She says. Follow her. She's like getting up. And she's like, um, we need to be closing soon. Do you mind, Arnold? And she like, there's a guard outside. Like shuts the door. Oop, like that. Like, yeah. Okay. Does he lock it? Um, just like... He just shuts it for now. You know, just kind okay. of like... Yeah, I guess he does lock it, right? What do you guys do? Um, I'm suspicious. No, I don't want to find it. I want to sign it suspicious. It's going to get closing time, and they're getting ready to lock up. We're still in here, so... Now, yeah, I do find it suspicious that they're locking up. And we're still here. Um, so we'll ask... Uh, uh, why are you uh, locking up? Oh, we close at eight. Yeah. Well, we need to get out. She says this way. She's like walking up the stairs. I move the model. You see, like when I move you guys up to here, um, you guys get up to where she's leading you guys to. Um, you guys see the guy that you met at the hall, Valaxia, right over here. Right here, I have him in the model. It looks like um, she is entertaining some guests, um, some other nobles that are from the wedding. I kind of want to put on some music here. Give me a second. I'll play that battle music. <laughs> battle music time. Now just some mystery music, maybe. <laughs> um, mystery. We have the vault upstairs. With this amount of gold, I'm assuming that you'll need to take it out in the sacks? Um, or shall we provide you the sacks to take it out and put it in the carriage? Convert it to platinum? Yeah, less. Please, less. Of course. We can probably just take it in the bag of we have here. Oh, oh my. Yes. You got that from the king, didn't you? As she continues to walk up the stairs. Is anybody else doing anything? Looks like someone's uh, wandering I, off. I, I pour <laughs> my platinum into the bag of holding. Okay, so Azul puts his money into Evie's bag of holding, correct? Yep. Okay, how Evie puts it on the sheet, I guess. I don't know how we want to do it. Because <laughs> how ownership works in D&D is a little odd. You know, sharing things across items. How about this? How it works is Azul, you keep it on your character sheet, right? Gotcha. Maybe just have it under your notes or something, so that way it removes the weight count from your inventory. I don't know. Gotcha. Just throwing as an idea. Um, she walks up the stairs. Are you guys following her? No, oh, Azul follows. Azul, yeah, it's already moved up there. Um, okay. Where are we going? I think we're too far, Azul. And we have to go back downstairs. She actually leads you to a place like here. Um, and there's got to be a guard like posted outside this area, right? Makes a lot of sense. Um, there's like okay. more desks and stuff. I will actually tell you what it is. She says, do you mind if you wait right here? Say that to me. I'm just, she's saying it to the party. Oh. I'm assuming the party has moved up to where Evie, Azul, you've moved far. I'm sorry, that area is off limits. Uh, uh, slave, come back here. Yep. You shouldn't leave your master behind. <laughs> can't, I can't see. Anything. I just moved Azul back down. So uh, let me see if I can describe this area. I mean, I just kind of have the model out, and the model's pretty representative of what it looks like. You know, there's. Yeah, that's good. yeah uh, I mean, and, it's a pretty well, big map with like lots of stuff. There's like libraries and books. Like, you see another grand table over here. Exit, and where are you at? I'm going to have to go dig you out. Uh, I'm about. Uh, Might I have to teleport oh. your model up here? <laughs> no, I got there. Okay, you're not Thanks. upstairs, though. Let me move you up here. Oh. Oop, there you are. And then I think Kordar... Kordar's a bird, but I'll move Kordar as a as model for here. But Kordar's a bird. Because Kordar's assuming he's following along as a bird? Or is Kordar doing anything else? You're muted, buddy. I'm dumb. No, you're good. <laughs> I am... Uh, I wanted to, like, scan the windows on the level we are to see like if there's anything inside that might pertain to my interests. Um it's like one way windows. Make an investigation roll. Investigation. Oh. 
18. Something's wrong. You like, Oof. you're pecking around and stuff like that. And not as all what it seems. As you peck around some of the stone, your beak passes through the stone. And like, as you pull your beak back, it like fades, like the image of it fades. Uh, I'll, uh, it, I see them inside those still hanging around with her. It's hard to, you can't, it's like, it's, right now it's like one way looking, like the glasses mm -hmm. are tinted so badly. You try to look through and you can only assume that just, you're like, you know, you've heard. Are all of them are, or is there one window lower that I could possibly fly into? Make a perception roll. You got to roll pretty high, though. Oh, uh, perception's not bad. No, try that's to, bad. Try to find a place? No, you'd have to fly in through the main thing. I would try to fly to the main door. You see the guard, like, from the other side, like, coming to shut the other door, right? Mm -hmm. And you fly right through, and he's like, and the guard says, get the fuck out! Because he, like, tries to, like, <laughs> shoot you out, and you, like, fly up the yeah. stairs. Sc screw him. I've moved you to where the rest of the party is, correct? <laughs> Alrighty. Well, unless you want to do something else, you're kind of like uh, no, looking around uh, and stuff. I will land on one of them, try to like make sure. On the guard? No, on one of the party members. So I guess even when I first walk in. Which party I'll member are you landing on? Exodin, because I'm still assuming he's Exodin, at the front door. This owl or bird? What type of bird? You said a blue jay before. It, uh, this one it is. Uh, it's a plover. It's that little bird that eats off his crocodile's uh, teeth. Okay. A little clover uh, bird, right? Yeah. What is it, like, what's since, the color of it? Oh, it's uh, black, gray, and it has like a regular orange body to it. Like it's like a crow almost? Like an orange body? Oh, no, uh, yeah, but a lot really. smaller. Okay, really small, like a thrush? Yeah. Like, uh, like a hummingbird size. Okay, cool. With a long nose, uh, like a hummingbird or no? No, just a small beak, okay. like any other bird. The bird, Kordar, is a shape change form. Perches on Exodus plate mail armor. The talons. You said as a, I, I could uh, talk to you, right? Yes, and your wild shape. That's one of the house rules we use is that you can actually talk in your wild shape. You just can't cast spells or anything like that. But it allows you to roll play, so you're not just sitting there in you know <laughs> wild shape. <laughs> uh, I know this might be weird, but uh, <laughs> oh, I am a bird. Deep voice coming from a bird. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. <laughs> but something is wrong. That, I've just this uh, area's area feels a bit trapped. There's magic surrounding the place, and I haven't had a good feeling since I stepped in here. I don't feel I don't think our friends are possibly safe. I'll go up ahead, but if you want to follow, do so, and I'll try to fly uh, up the staircase. You fly up the staircase, and like, what is also the rest of the group doing? As as the bird speaks to you. Uh, that warning, I will also be going up the stairs. To the top? I gave her the note, right? Yeah. Um, yes, you did give her the note. And she took okay. it and walked down the stairs. Okay. Um, so wait, who's up there with the... We got, did we get something? Are we all together? You're all by yourself. You're up there on the third floor of the, of the bank. Okay. So we're all together. Then I'm going to just stick with the party. Okay. What is Azul doing? The woman went down. Yeah. No. We were prevented from going upwards. She told you it was off limits. Here. Yeah. Is it dark in here or is there enough lighting that I don't have to worry about that? In the middle of winter time, it's gotten like pretty dark out now. It's like eight o'clock, so it's dark, right? All right. Then I'm going to light a torch. Well, it's still bright in here, I'm saying, but like oh, the model yeah, represents okay. sort of what it is. And I count it as bright light. Okay. That's a strange warning from a bird person. Um, Zul will... Should we follow the woman? Or investigate upstairs? You asking us or you thinking yourself? Uh, asking out loud. I am already flying up there to see if I can possibly get through unless there's a door blocking me. 
Um, make another roll, a uh, perception roll to try to find. You're trying to find a way into like the rooms or something. Yeah, the she, area that she tried to uh, like warn us about. Oh, go upstairs. You just fly to the top, and it's like um, if you move your model up there, you can see that it's like a beautiful landscape of Stormbrook, like mm -hmm. dozens of houses. You know, within the area, it's near the coastline, and um, you hear the bells of the the do ships docking out at sea. Right. You hear movement coming up from downstairs. What do you guys do? So he draws his bow. You're gonna draw your bow? Downstairs. Yeah. And what do you I'll do, let Go down. I'm gonna just move and take a little bit of cover behind that wall. <laughs> Stay your weapon until they show us their surprise. Accident like puts his hand on you a little bit, Azul, as you try to like draw your bow a little bit. Puts away the bow and takes out the dagger. Uh, you just like conceal the dagger though? Keep it out the dagger. Yeah, it's cool. You have like a dagger, but it's like sleight of handed, right? Like it's kind of hidden in a way, kind of something a rogue would do. Um, the so there's two guards that come up the stairway. You hear them talking. They're like, "They have one of the king's seals here." You hear them talking, just like amongst the things. And um, where is Cordar at? Is Cordar back? Uh, in the uh, yeah, but I'll try to like tuck into somebody's like if they have a coat or a shirt. <laughs> I'll try to, like hide. You kind of go under I one of Exodus' like shoulder. Visible. Yeah, I'm assuming you're going under Exodus, right? Yeah, whoever has. Like pretty good coverage for me. Does like, Exodus wear a cape? Him. Um, no. <laughs> I've got a big ass goofy cape. dress on. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Evie has a big ass goofy dress on. <laughs> big and goofy. <laughs> Hiding in a little loot. Um, you see them? They're like down here, and they're they're like moving up the stairs. Um, accident is sort of halfway down the stairs. I've just put you guys where you're kind of out in position. I have two accidents. <laughs> There's two accidents out here? There's a <laughs> bug or something that's happening right now where if you put the model out, like, it'll create two models. It's just a bug or something that they have. Uh, hello, lords and ladies. Um, this is a lot of gold. Um, that the, you've asked from the king. Um, may I ask... Um, can did you check the authenticity of the seal? Yes, it checks out. Um, may I ask why the king has asked you for this gold, and why are you coming out at night so much, at this hour, to collect on this sum of gold? You dare ask my lady a question? Be quiet, slave. Fitting. We can come back in the morning if it's a problem. And sirs, the king was very nice to make a trade with us at his wedding feast. And we were probably going to be leaving town soon because we were just in town for the wedding. Hmm. Oh, there are a few we're on a mission for him. Should we have them see the, uh, the leader? Yes, have them see them. Okay. Well, let's go get your gold. And um, the guy, this guy who is um, Balaxia, who you guys met at the wedding, you know, that Cordor talked to and Cordor backed away from, goes up to the door here and opens the door. And you see, you know, piles of gold, it's like a vault. Oh. And inside, though, you see two creatures. Oh. Um, one of the, it's a person in there. And the other person or thing is a dragon. And it's a giant, it's a pretty large dragon. I'll put it out. It's a bronze dragon. I think this is the right size. I would imagine any size that's huge counts as a dragon. Yeah, it's the right size. It's like curled up around the coins. And Kordar, it's a bronze dragon. Some kind. Um, Miss, Madame, um, there's some people here to see you. Yes, we'll bring them in. 
he like knocked on the door before, you know, he opened the door up. <laughs> and that's where we'll begin next game. All right. Cool, huh? Wow. Okay. Our first dragon to... encounter. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we could team up with the dragon to take out Ina Parnish. That's a possibility. We've already heard that the uh, the dragon's hating him, and the guild, uh, you know, the bank hates him too. At least the, let me see if I can describe this vault here. That's the same dragon that he was trying to get us to hurt? Oh, no. Possibly. Uh, no, I can't do it. Oh, wait, actually, I can. Actually, I will say the creature is actually in its true form. A creature with a lion's body and the torso of a head of a dark-haired human woman reclines on a long purple chair, examining the gaudy gold necklace held in the white gloved hands. Sprawled on the floor alongside the hanging paintings and pedestals displaying jeweled artwork, a dragon with gleaming brass scales prattles on endlessly about how beautiful all the art is. And that's where we'll begin next session. <laughs> you guys have fun? <laughs> you guys finally got your bag of holding. Man, that only took us gold. three <laughs> sessions. <laughs> <laughs> the elusive well, bag of holding. It's very important when we have to worry about weight. Yeah, yes. I'm going to send you back in your eagle form. Go get the gold. <laughs> Next thing, whoever has it is going to trip and tear it open. Oh no! <laughs> Bad. That'd be so and then all the goals in in the ash you'll see. This is the only model I found for this creature, Laskill. This creature. So I put her in there. Cool guys. I had fun, man. Yeah, that was mm. a good time. I it went a lot better. Having a ball thought. with all your, <laughs> your how you impersonated all the NPCs. I was <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I he varnishes is back yeah you can it's try to kill him man you can still try to get I him love to hate it. i love <laughs> to hate that voice it's so <laughs> i love oh, it you're I, love it. I know i love it's like uh <laughs> king joffrey is just so good to hate yeah wow. accident you want to kill ian punish i only <laughs> possessed istra's body though and now i'm the true king of stormbrook <sighs> <laughs> it was kind of we've gone for a full circle in our other game uh i killed another player and they decided he was a big crocodile they chopped up his body and ate him so it was a very meta moment wait they killed their own they ate their own party member <laughs> they ate one of their own party members they started barbecuing <laughs> the them up what kind of group are they <laughs> it is what it is man <laughs> that's fucked and up. were they were they really hungry and you will evie, always be a part of me and evie like you um You've now seen, uh, what is it? Uh, your own character make. You've seen. You've like done the meta too now. Like you've seen your own, own character too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of crazy wackiness of D and D. Just not let them die in peace. <laughs> I was playing this Elven music before. It was pretty sweet. You guys have any questions, or we're just good to go? Or you guys just so glad else? that we didn't die. No, we're or good. Uh, yeah. provoke his wrath. I was, I was secretly, I was like, I should have, I, I really wanted to try and steal that. I'm so you know. glad Evie told you not to. <laughs> that could end yeah. bad, right? <laughs> and I thought my business deals were bad. This guy would be a try and steal. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding. Right from another king. Yeah, as a slave. That was. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would have been nice to know you, Azul, but we don't know you anymore. <laughs> Immediately put TV on the execution spot as well. And I was accident. also thinking of, thinking of stealing the, the fingers, too. I was also it's like, what do you think? If if like, if like you stole it and they figured that out, then even the accident would probably have been like, in jail until they found you. Or dead. And we didn't find out. We, did, we didn't. The king that doesn't know, or at least doesn't know from us, that Rizu has the finger. But if you know he's gonna go after him anyway. Maybe. So. Who's Rizu? The genie. Oh, oh, right, right, right. And Adeline's parents are not dead, so that's good. Don't want them. Not yet. Oh, I forgot to write that. Down. Yeah. I forgot to write that. Down. Not yet. Yeah. Keyword yet. Parents are somewhere out there hiding. 
dead. Because of a good roll. Good on you. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll see if your parents die. <laughs> <laughs> the people that Exodin met with, was that the Iron Bank? Or the Lynx? Uh, or the yeah, we don't people? know. Oh. Who did Exodin meet up with? Exodin, the, so the guild, the merchant guild is called the Iron Lynx. Okay. And instead of just calling That's like a blanket guild. term called the merchant guild, the Iron Lynx are the group of merchants that run most of Orin as Orin is becoming more reestablished as you guys change the world. Right now, Stormbrook has been liberated, so the merchants are trying to set up trade between, say, Barovia with the fine wine of the Vistani and the slave trade between then and Vagrax. Now that Summerkind has been invaded, the merchants are impartial. They just sell and buy goods. But obviously, you know, these kings have their own ambitions too. Oof, man. Right? I'm interested to see where this goes now. And how you, you guys can influence it too. You guys can do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, if you guys kill Ian Barnish or something or kill Rizu or whatever or do whatever you guys want to do, um, you know, it used to be an old kingdom called the Elunian Kingdom in Orin, which had the four great cities of men. And so the last war displaced many people. And so Star a lot war. of... Yeah, do whatever you guys want. <laughs> we'll take both of them down. Uh, do you actually want to kill the dragon, Evie? No. Like, I, you don't have to do that. Well, uh, she, does, she doesn't care. She doesn't, that's, uh, that's the mind reading... As much as mine reads, she was legitimately going to kill the dragon. Yeah, but I mean, we could be talked out of it. I mean, it's not something I have to do. Yeah. I was saying what I needed to to get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> um. He. So that's a separate dragon than the very first dragon he asked us about, right? Unknown. Oh, no. We don't know. Oh, okay. He said there was a dragon in the sea that was um, sinking the merchant ships. And he wants you guys to stop it. So this was a problem that was... He talked about you guys the first time. But you guys are like almost a whole different party in a way, you know? The way you presented well, yourself. The Excellent first enough. time he said the dragon was an old protector. Destroying, yeah, protecting the city. Right? That's correct. That it has, wasn't doing its job anymore, so that was the first yeah. thing. And Maybe. now the dragon that's killing, <laughs> killing ships. Only X would know that. The ships have gone Apparently. missing at the harbor, and um, or they're missing, and the sailors have rumors that it's a dragon that's causing it. And it's rumored to be the old protector, um, which was a brass dragon that protected Stormbrook at okay. one time before the last war, and for whatever reason, the last war was a very brutal war and left much of the heroes and protectors of the realm displaced, including even some of the dragons, maybe. Again, it's Maybe a mystery that would need to be you. figured out. Yes. Make friends with dragons. That's always a good idea. No. Yes. And then murder I hate dragons. <laughs>